Are we sure he isn't just ignorant? How ignorant do you have to be for a grown woman to tell you I'm not interested 17 times? When do you get it? When do you stop being ignorant? When does the ignorance go from ignorance to deliberate consent violation? Tell me that. <laughs> What did you say? Girl, this is the craziest. This is more intense than Brooke. This, this is, this is more, this is a bigger deal than Australian accent, except for the fact that he said his mom died. That was pretty intense. Thanks, I hope you enjoyed that. Nice, that was awesome. Now, one thing that you need to know about me is that I have found it incredibly difficult to make friends since moving to the UK. I went from being incredibly popular and people like me and having friends and all of that, yada, 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 to not having any friends. And so it has been very, very difficult for me to make friends and more importantly, to sustain long-term friendships. And after this whole situation, I am more inclined to believe that my not having a lot of friends here and finding it very difficult to make friends here is actually more so a blessing than a curse. I recently got broken up with by my best male friend, Lachlan. And I think our friendship and the very toxic and vicious love triangle that it turned into really demonstrates the distinction between a good friendship and a bad friendship. It feels very strange to say that I just got broken up with by Lachlan when it wasn't a romantic relationship, but I do think that we don't really talk a lot about how painful the end of a friendship can be, how ending a friendship when it does end, especially when it is definitively ended and doesn't just sort of wither out over time, how difficult that can be. And I think because these are the most common relationships in our life, it seems bizarre to me how we don't actually pay more heed and attention. True. Friendship breakups? Real, bro. They're real. You know, they're they're just as... That's why I say chosen family is key, bro. Is this my friend a chosen family person? Because if they just like kind of dwindle over time then I feel like that's just natural. Like friendships end, it's no big deal. But then it can be a very big deal when somebody like disappears from your life or you get cut off or blocked or like randomly, like that sucks, right? That's just like, there's no way around it. It sucks. It just like, it sucks. There's nothing good about it, but also it happens. But friendship breakups are so real. They really impact you, especially as a young person. Like if you're going through it in school, in high school or middle school, but it really does happen in adults, adulthood. Friendship breakups are real, bro. Yeah, check in on your besties, you know? and concern to the end or the breakup of friendships. It's really sad, actually. Now, there is so much on reflection going through this on my own and also going through this with a therapist that has made me realize that our entire friendship from the get-go was entirely manufactured by Lachlan. None <gasps> of it was organic. None of it was just circumstance what? or that this just happened because this just happened. I was duped and I let myself be duped. And so this is a lesson to all of you to just be wary, to be wary what? of the Lachlan's of the world and to what? also be wary of yourself when you encounter the Lachlan's of the world because I did some damn stupid things. Okay, we will get into all of that. The whole friendship I realized started- I'm sorry, why do we know this person's name? Are they like a public figure or did Kid just give them a name for the video? Who's Lachlan? What is this? Who is this person? from a place of parasociality and limerence. And I will explain oh. what limerence is in due course because I think some context is needed for that. But I think it would be good to detail this very interesting little story in a series of lessons about what to look for and signs to look for in a bad friendship. I call this series of lessons why your male best friend never was and never will be your friend. Number one. Oh my God, why he's not Jim Helpert or whatever his name is from the, the office, shut up. Your first meeting was meticulously orchestrated. Picture this, you get an email from a man called Lachlan, who is an art lover and has city connections. And he knows by perusing your- Okay, wait, wait, PG says kid just made up the name for the video. Okay, okay, this is crazy. I'm hooked. I'm fucking hooked already. Let's social go. media that you like a particular person that he knows personally. Lachlan then tells you that this person knows you, they know your work, and they really want to meet you. Now, obviously, I didn't think anything of this at the time. Sure. I just wanted to meet this particular person because I am a huge fan of this particular person. So I was like, sure. But then- L Oh, so they're a content creator. Oh, Lo and behold, you meet this person and something is a bit off. What I really noticed was that this person actually didn't know who I was. Oh. They didn't want to meet me. This wasn't like some reunion of like mutual minds or anything. They honestly didn't really know who, actually they didn't, they didn't know who I was like at all. Okay. What? They didn't know who I was. In fact, when you ask them further questions, they tell you that they didn't know who you were until Lachlan mentioned you and kept going on and on about you to them. That's oh. suspicious. So she's not talking about meeting Lachlan yet. She's talking about meeting somebody else who Lachlan knows. Yeah, 
that's weird. They don't actually know or particularly like you, but you are a very nice person and they are very happy to have met you. Now, importantly, I only met Lachlan in the flesh on two occasions for a total of 10 hours face to face. 10 hours we met in the flesh, us together talking one on one. I was in a major British city. He offered to be my host while I was there and it all went very smoothly, swimmingly, in fact. We spoke about books. We spoke about the Smiths. We went and saw a very beautiful chapel. It was all very lovely, all very quaint, all very sort of tourist person going about a part of the city looking umming and ahhing having a nice time with a tour guide essentially and when I left I was very much under the impression that this was the end of things that this was ultimately just like sort of a professional encounter and relationship just him being somebody who wanted to connect me with somebody and that was that and so I really didn't think I was ever going to see him again to be honest and I was right I never saw him again in person and oh if only things could have ended there the second reason why your male friend never was and never will be your friend is because he tells you one thing and does something else six days past since he has been my host in this major British city. And I, on the sixth day, get a message. Hey Z, I'm sorry, I'm going to read all of this very dramatically because this really builds up to the drama and the melodrama of this entire I'm situation that hooked. I think really needs to be brought home from the beginning of this story time. Hey Z, I don't know whether it's right to send this message or not, but I guess it's a mistake I'm willing to make. In so many words, Lachlan says that he wants to get to know me better, but importantly, he also tells me that he appreciates that we live on completely opposite sides of the country. And so he isn't looking for a romantic relationship, at least not immediately and not in the conventional sense of dating. That is, our dating wouldn't be a long distance situation ship. It would be more of a just getting to know each other and seeing where things go. Now, I'm not one for rejecting people because rejection and abandonment is quite literally the story of my life. And so it is the thing that gives me the least pleasure. And I fortunately have not found myself in that situation, except in this one example. Based on everything that he said about not wanting this to be a romantic... Wait, is she going to read this? situation in the conventional sense or for this to be no hold on obviously we live in opposite sides of the country but personally i'm not looking for the kind of relationship anymore that necessitates seeing each other all the time going out every week not thinking in an intentional way if two people are limited to just talking to each other and a connection is built that way maybe it's stronger and more meaningful as a result i'm honestly sorry if you've ever cringed your way through this message so far but if you would be interested in getting to know each other more or perhaps seeing each other again next year let me know wait did kid realize she was a lesbian at this point I mean, even if she had or hadn't, it doesn't matter. But like, I'm just curious about the timeline. About not wanting this to be a romantic situation in the conventional sense or for this to be a casual relationship or for this to be some kind of alternative relationship or what have you. That this was just about getting to know each other ultimately. I was perfectly okay with doing that. Sure. Personally, I've only met this guy twice. I spent a maximum of 10 hours with him. I have absolutely no qualms with getting to know him a bit better. I'm actually delighted to because our first meeting was actually a really nice meeting. Fair. I importantly asked him for clarification because I didn't nice. at that point really understand what he was trying to say. On the one hand, he was saying that he wants to get to know me better. And on the other hand, he was saying that he isn't looking for a long distance relationship, even though he appreciates that we live on opposite sides of the country. And I do remember saying to him on our first encounter. Okay, PG says this is before the lesbian realization, I think. Okay, okay, okay. And like, I'm glad she's asking for clarification because the message was kind of like what to very explicitly that i absolutely hate big cities and i could never live in a big city like the city that he lives in and i was quite reassured with the clarification that he gave me he said that he distinguishes between girlfriends and friends or girls who are friends that sure. he is not i repeat not looking for a long distance thing he said that he's looking for a girlfriend but that he liked me enough that he was willing to see where this may potentially go over the long term even though he wasn't looking for a long distance relationship i don't know why this didn't like sort of spark something in my mind but anyway it didn't and i said i think i've been here where you think it sounds casual and nice and it's not a big deal but then they have like 4d chess going on in their head so the problem isn't that she didn't think anything of it i think the problem is like he was playing 4d chess in his head because like yeah like I, I guess we'll just see where it goes but also if you're not interested in long distance then it can't go anywhere because we live long distance but also like I guess we'll see where it goes because like we're open and maybe we could end up together, but also like, what? Said, well, you know, that's fine. Thank you for the clarity. Appreciate it. And I would also be very willing to get to know you over a long period of time and very slowly. Now, I didn't see this going anywhere at all. I really did just see this as something of it just getting to know somebody and it ultimately just fizzling out over time as they all do. And I was perfectly happy to entertain that because honestly, as I said, I don't like doing rejection. I don't do rejection of people. It's really not my forte whatsoever. And I also, at this point, had for about nearly a year been exclusively dating only women. I didn't say this to him because I hadn't said this to 
to anyone. I have not been open about my sexuality until very recently. Interestingly, he doesn't ask me once what I'm looking for, which is sort of kind of a ding, staple. Ding, 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 ding. What am I looking for? What do I need? What am I interested in? Mm -hmm. Of our friendship. He never asked me about me. And this is very important, especially for the context which I'm about to bring up. I asked mm. him. Cognitive says, I don't think he's hiding his intention rather than lowering the pressure of getting to know each other. Well, it would be the case if he wasn't actually hiding his intention. But obviously, I assume the bomb on the conversation is that he was actually hiding his intention. You're right that if he wasn't hiding something, it would be fine. It's the fact that he is hiding something, which I assume is the bomb she's about to throw on us. You know what I mean? I haven't seen it. No spoilers. That is the problem, right? Him questions like, what is he looking for? What does he want in a relationship? Is he happy with being in a long distance relationship with somebody or doesn't he want to be in a long distance, etc. Anyway, one day passes from us establishing the foundation of this very slow getting to know you, that we are going to get to know each other and just see what happens. Sure, fine with that. I know where this is heading. At least I think I do. Now, as I want to emphasize, I do not know this guy from Adam. I only know him professionally via email, via him being a tour guide to me. That's pretty much all I know of him. I've spent 10 hours with him and he's also just told me that he wants to take a long time getting to know me that he's perfectly happy not doing the so like three days maybe five conventional getting to know somebody situationship that you have right and now he's invited himself or is trying to invite himself over to my house to stay for the weekend i do what? appreciate that he oh, acknowledged girl no don't sp skip the teasy to invite himself over to my house to stay girl this is probably too soon but i'll throw it out there i have I have a quiet blank at work blank. So I could potentially come spend some time with you. The blank. I'd bring my laptop. So if you had to work to get on with, then I can do the same. And if so, you'd be comfortable with me staying over. I can literally sleep on the surface, on any surface, or just bring the blow up mattress that I have, which is genuinely so comfortable. I've needlessly chosen it over my own bed at various times. Okay. Okay. Can I say something about upgrading our life? Can I say something about getting older? I love staying with friends who can host me. And I love the idea of being able to host certain people for sure. But I really have graduated past that point in my life where your adult friends assume they can sleep on their couch, on your couch. Cause like, I don't no. Like, unless you are one of my closest friends, unless I know you very well, like no one is sleeping on my couch. We're in our thirties now. You can get a hotel or an Airbnb. Now, I know Z isn't in her 30s yet, to be fair, but this is one thing I did in my 20s. I always let people sleep on my floor or on my couch, but then I was like, no, my, my space is sacred. I'm an adult. I pay too much for rent to have you stay on my couch. I'm sorry. Like, again, if you are very close to me, if you are like siblings or family or inner circle, like we can have the conversation, but even then, like my parents invited us to sleep at their house. I, I would rather sleep at a hotel so we can have privacy to talk in the middle of the night right? Like my parents' house is very small. We wouldn't be able to talk in the middle of the night. Even when you love and trust somebody, sometimes getting an Airbnb is just better for everybody involved. Plus, I don't want to really get intimate with my husband in my mom and dad's house, okay? So we would have to be celibate the whole time, girl, because I ain't going to do it in their house, okay? So again, it's like, I'd rather just get an Airbnb. Like, I'm good. I'd rather just do that. Okay. This inviting yourself over to someone's house is something you do do in your 20s. I think that's pretty normal, I would say that this is where you you start to be open with boundaries because especially if you're a neurodivergent queen, not that Z is, but for myself, having somebody in your space, having anything changed, having your routine messed with, it's a lot. It's a lot. So for this guy to just feel comfortable inviting himself over is fine, but I think it's important to put down your boundaries, you know, because bro, uh, no. Hey, for the weekend. I do appreciate that he acknowledges that it's probably too soon, but I. Z says, I didn't find it weird that he asked to stay over. I found it weird that after everything he said about slowly getting to know each other through talking, as an antidote to everything he disliked about the rush of modern dating, he wants to sleep over almost immediately. I agree with her. It, to some extent, I think in queer circles and a lot of spaces, it's not that abnormal to sleep over people's houses without sex or moving things too fast. But I think that's why we have to take into consideration people's personal space. It's sort of an intimacy space for a lot of people. 
still thought that this was quite interesting on reflection, that this was very much an example of somebody saying one thing and doing another thing. But there was oh, something- wait, good point. Ribbit says, is it normal to invite yourself over? Maybe super close friends, but someone she spent 10 hours with? No, 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 you're right. I forgot, sorry. Well, no, I think it, well, I think it could be normal. If one night stands invite themselves over to your house, why wouldn't a guy you have, you've met in real life and you're talking to also do that? No, I think it could be normal. Guys, we let one night stands in our houses. We let strangers from Tinder in our house. I don't, but you do. <laughs> Maybe not you guys, but think about how many people take home to Tinder dates to their homes, right? She's known this guy longer than a Tinder date. So I don't know. I don't think it's that abnormal, but it just depends on your bubble, right? else very important here that caught my attention and that was this message p.s as redundant and useless as a fart in an empty room is a line worthy of the thick of it now this took me a what and if you'd be comfortable with me staying over i can literally sleep on any surface okay no worries at all if it's too soon or you'd prefer to wait a bit longer before meeting again in person it's totally fine oh see this caveat no worries if it's all too soon or you'd prefer to wait a bit longer well it's more like it's more like we can meet in person but you got to stay at a hotel you know, he goes, I hope you managed to get some in over skate, skate. I don't get that. Why is there a skate emoji in over PS as redundant and useless as a fart in an empty room is a line worthy of the thick of it. I don't get any of this, but okay. No worries at all. If it's too soon, we, or, or you'd prefer to wait till it's a bit longer. He could be saying, Hey, if it's too soon to meet up in general, we don't have to, or he's saying, let's meet up when you're ready for me to stay at your place. This is too confusing. I would ask for a lot of clarification. Nothing is technically wrong. Like nothing is bad necessarily. It's just a miscommunicating. Oh, she's a skater. Oh, kids skates. How cool. I love that. So I hope you managed to get some skating in over the weekend or whatever, maybe. Again, nothing he's saying is immediately a red flag, but everything he's saying requires a follow up. As redundant and useless as a fart in an empty room is a line worthy of the thick of it. Now, this took me a hot minute to actually understand what was being said here. I had to think for a while. I was thinking, what on earth is this? What are you quoting? Should I know this? Is this from a book? Did we discuss a film or something? I've forgotten that we discussed. Is this some kind of quotation from that? Am I being stupid? And then it hit me. But of course, everybody has just moved on or doesn't care whatsoever. Going into the new year, these moments will be as redundant and useless as a fart in an empty room. Then now, obviously, oh. I cannot have a problem with somebody watching my videos that's not oh mm, you never want to date a fan you never want to date a fan all these boys who get groupies mm -mm. nonsensical to have a problem with somebody watching your videos or to think that it's odd that's nonsensical I, I do not have a problem with that in the slightest at all that's completely <sighs> fine do what you will with your free time thank you <laughs> <laughs> what I do find a bit odd is quoting me verbatim and letting me know indirectly that you are watching me. I don't know. Just a tip to anyone who's wanting to chat up a content creator. Do not quote lines from their videos to them. It won't have the desired effect. Yeah, it, it definitely doesn't. It definitely doesn't help to date a fan. Like it's, it's very much a red flag. Like you never want to date a fan. You want to date somebody who knows your work. I think that's really complimentary. You want somebody who knows your work and is, you know, likes it. Like if you're a painter, how lovely is it that your partner thinks you're a great painter? But would you want your paint, your, your partner to be like a groupie? No, like you would never want to date somebody that was like, oh, Picasso, Picasso. I don't know why I thought of Picasso, but you know what I mean? No, if this is just a, a, a me thing with this, but I do find that a little bit unsettling. I don't find that terribly especially for somebody who i don't know at all anyway mm. thanks blessings and riches lesson number three he tells you he loves you so in the period of under a month we have a total of two zoom calls and these are just zoom calls where we talk about books about films we just have very you know conversations that are quite sort of pop intellectual conversations really great conversations loved having them like you know don't regret them we had a good of a time talking about films i would call my friendship style very q and a and i think that this dynamic works very well for my male friendships and is why I think I'm quite good with my male friendships. This is because I love asking questions. I really like asking people questions and sort of listening to their answers, digesting them, and then asking sort of follow up and following questions and leading questions. That's what I like to do. Oh, wait, great question from Caitlin says like, what does it mean to be a fan? Because I like a lot of people's work and can feel it deeply, but I don't know if that makes me a fan. I'm a fan of a lot of people. You know what a fan is? A fan is somebody who watches a content creator or a work of art and has an intimate relationship with the work of art and doesn't have a real relationship with the artist themselves. 
like you to have an intimacy with the person, you would actually have to have the barrier of crossing and even past acquaintance, right? Like being a fan of somebody, like putting them on a pedestal in some way or objectifying them in some way or thinking of them as someone that like different from you. There's so many variations of fan, but mostly the kind of fan you don't want to interact with is somebody who like makes, you don't want to be with somebody who thinks they're cooler because they know you. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't want to date somebody who thinks, oh, look how cool I am. Like, Brittany Simon chose me. Like, no, that's so unhealthy because then what you're doing is you're objectifying that person. They really say, don't meet your heroes. Don't meet the people you're a fan of because it will pop the illusion you have of that artist. So like, I love things. I love to consume things. Like when I meet people, it depends on who they are. Like if I'm like, oh, I really love your work, but I don't want to get to know that person. I'm very much staying a fan. Like there are people that I do not want to meet who I love the work they produce. And I would say I'm a fan of them. But if I if I think of them as a peer and maybe I'd want to meet them, then maybe I would think of myself as like fan of their work and friend to them because lots of content creators are fans of each other's work. Like Kidology said she was a fan of my work. I'm a fan of Kidology's work, but I'm not a fan of Kidology herself. Like we're peers. To be fair though, we're both independent con content creators and this is our full-time job. So Kid and I were able to, and check out our last conversation we did together if you haven't seen it. It's so f***ing good. But Z and I have at least a peer working friendship. So I, I could never be a, friend of, a fan of her, but I am a fan of her work. So there's also that separation. I think this guy is probably going to be the guy who thinks he's cooler because Z's talking to him or, ooh, Kidology's into me or something creepy like that, you know? And because of the style of how I do friendships, I find it very easy to notice when somebody doesn't ask me questions back. My friendship with Lachlan was very Q&A-esque. I would ask questions, he would give answers, and he very much liked the sound. Ooh, he liked the attention. Found off his own voice. And I did notice, especially when I spoke to my therapist and reflected with my therapist about this friendship, this new friendship that I had, that one thing that was quite dissatisfying to me was that I didn't get any questions asked of me. There were no questions asked about what I liked. There weren't questions asked about what I liked to read, about what I was doing. I would ask a question such as, okay, so what book are you reading at the moment? Because I'm looking for something new to read because I've just finished reading XYZ book. It was a great book. And we spoke a handful of times via message, but not frequently because as all my friends know, I am not good at virtual communication. I hate messaging or anything. My phone is purely an iPod. I actually do tell all of my friends the exact same and anecdotal story that if they get kidnapped or if they get arrested and they have one opportunity of escape or they can make one phone call, they must not call me because they will inevitably end up spending. Ooh, Mimi, I, sorry, kid. Mimi, I really like this. You said, I think I, you can only be a fan if you don't try to see the person behind the work. Yeah, I think that's probably really true because I will say at this stage in my life, like, I don't really think I'm a fan of anyone. I think I grew out of being a fan of people, but I'm definitely a fan of people's work. Like, oh my God, a piece of music or something else. But I do, I do remember being a fan as a teenager. Oh my God, I loved bands. And I did have that sense of like, oh my gosh. But now I would say I'm more or less a fan of someone's work. And I actually, yeah, I think I, I definitely am more into what you create. I think that's what's more interesting to me. Mm, I am a consumer. Like I like John Verveke's Meaning Crisis, but I, I don't know if I'm a fan of John Verveke. Like I like the work he's created, but I don't know him. So it's weird to say I'm a fan of John Verveke, but I'm a fan of his work for sure. I think his work is really good. You know, I favor his work. If that's, you know, is that a better way? I think that's the way we should probably talk and encourage our kids to talk anyways. My parents did particularly try to encourage us not to worship celebrities because you know, those moms, like, I'm sorry, I know I reference it all the time, but think about the parents that took their kids to see Jenna Marbles and Julian at their house. And as I was bringing the packages in from outside, a grown ass woman drove up with her son asking if she knew if this was the street Jenna Marbles lived on. Um, and so I, I said to her, I said, you can't be here. I said, this is not okay. And she said, I don't know. All of these parents nowadays are taking their kids to these YouTubers houses. It's pretty crazy. And I said, yeah, you drove here. You were the crazy, like you were that, you were the problem here. I don't know why you're trying to act like you're on my team. I said, I think it's best if you leave. And she said, oh, well, we just parked because we're just gonna go for a walk. And I said, no, you didn't. Like you came to our house. So if you could please leave, that might be best. So she hops in her car and leaves with her poor fucking son who has a mom that would do something like that, set that kind of example. I don't understand that. A grown person drives their kid to another person's house 
invading all of their privacy. And now I'm like sitting here waiting for my fucking dinner and I don't want to go out front. And if I were in here, Jenna would have been fucking nice enough to say hi and give the kid a picture, which is totally fucked up that she would even have to do something like that or even be put in that situation. Like, I'm glad I answered the door and I was out there and she wasn't. <sighs> please don't come to our house. Just please don't do it. There are so many other ways that you can connect with us that are appropriate and not, I don't know, wrong, uncomfortable, setting a terrible example for your kid. So to that kid who looked up our address and told his mom to drive us here, I think you might be a little too young to understand why that's not okay. But I do apologize on behalf of your mom for showing you how to invade someone else's privacy because your mom's job is to be the one setting the example of how not to do stuff like that. Think about the parents that instilled in their children a sense of entitlement over YouTubers because they're fans. Like the fact that the parents are, t that's, that's dangerous. That's scary. When you all go on dates with people, that's exactly who you don't want to get a, go on a date with. Somebody who's willing to do that. That's scary. And I do definitely think that my lack of virtual communication is why I don't have friends because I very much depend on that in-person sort of dynamic with people, very much so. Which is also why, as I said, I was not very hopeful of this friendship sort of like actually progressing into anything big. Now, as I said briefly, I had known by this point that I was interested in women and I was exclusively, at least for a year up until that point, exclusively dating and pursuing women. I hadn't told anybody about this until I decided that I was gonna make a YouTube video just about my thoughts and feelings and at this point after we had had these two zoom calls and had known each other for about a month at this point I thought it was time to tell him this so I had a feeling that his feelings of getting to know me slowly were progressing not just because he'd already suggested coming to stay with me for a whole weekend but because he had made the suggestion again and because of the oh. conversations that we we're having which as I said were very Q&A me asking him questions and me ultimately turning into some kind of therapist for him I just logically deduced that inevitably I thought that his feelings were probably not platonic, but now romantic. I had to nip this in the bud pretty quickly. I was running out of excuses and mm -hmm. I really was just getting a bit uncomfortable. So I wrote my own long message. So it was a long message of explaining things and some personal things about medicine that I was on, depression or yada, 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 all of that. Not very interesting. But this is, I think, the most important part to know. At the end of my message explaining my sexuality, I had the following to say. This is cliche, but I do genuinely mean it when I say that I greatly value this getting to know you situationship that we found ourselves in here but i do want to be transparent before letting this go further which would with all the clarity i've gotten in the past few days be unfair to you i'm also sorry and understand completely if you don't want to be friends after this most importantly i just really do hope and i'm sure that you will find what you want romantically i just don't see myself as a person who's going to bring that into your life and for that i am really sorry anyway i don't feel very comfortable messaging about these kinds of things so if you'd like to have a zoom call to talk or clear anything up i'm home most evenings this week and okay first of all based she also said i'm likely going to talk about a talk on my channel more openly about my sexuality going forward. This is cliche, but I do generally mean it when I say that I greatly value this get to know you French situationship. Okay, totally based. Love the clarification. Hate that she had to do this much emotional labor, but I love that she was able to do it because I think this is like very valid, right? Caitlin says it's rare for me to have a celebrity crush. Brandon Yuri was definitely one of them. Um, hello. I think we all loved Brandon Yuri as children. I mean, Panic at the Disco was everything. I remember having crushes on celebrities when I was a kid. For sure, bros. But realistically, and I think this is important, you you are supposed to age out of that. I think that's why it is weird to see grown women be like hyper fans and have very strong parasocial relationships with people. Because I just feel like, hey, eventually you're supposed to grow out of this. Like you are, so I think you're supposed to grow out of it. Because it's inappropriate. It's like you're forgetting those people are just people and they're doing a job. It's not that deep. They're just doing a job. You need to, you know what I mean? But also to be fair, as a celebrity, you do want people to have those relationships with you so they stay dedicated and buy your merch and do all these other things. This relationship, look, if the whole world was healthy, guys, we'd have a very different relationship with celebrities. We'd have a very different relationship with everything we do. So in some ways, you know, unhealthy is a way to a very interesting bag. I hate to say it. And even people who work to get people healthier, well, they're gonna need an unhealthy audience to get them better. Andrew Tate is self-help. If you do self-help specifically, like even we cover self-help a little bit here, I always say I like a medium traumatized audience or a healthy audience, people who have grown or are growing. But Andrew Tate picks on lonely and desperate men to cling to him for the answers. They're very unhealthy. And the more unhealthy they are, 
the more he gets paid. Doing about these kinds of things. So if you'd like to have a Zoom call to talk or clear anything up, I'm home most evenings this week. And so we scheduled a Zoom call for the following week. And apparently this didn't hurt his feelings at all. In fact, he told me that he wasn't heavily invested at all mm. in our relationship being romantic whatsoever. That this was all just a getting to know you sort of thing. That this was ultimately about friendship and that was it. I felt so stupid because in my mind, I'd really gotten this idea that, you know, because of how things had gone so well. Ooh, she's doubting herself, but we're going to get a bomb, right? I assume we're going to get a bomb. The past few weeks of us talking, especially with the two Zoom calls that we had, that this really did mean something big to him. And he even clarified this in a message a little bit later. When I mentioned at the start, that is of our Zoom call, that I wasn't heavily invested, just to clarify, I am indeed heavily invested in our friendship and the connection I have with you. You mean a lot to me, honestly, more than anybody has in a long while. I just meant that I wasn't heavily invested in only one idea of us as a romantic couple, to the extent of only wanting that and nothing else. I'm sure you got that anyway. I just hope it didn't come across as me saying, it's fine, I didn't care that much anyway, because that is untrue. But that message gave me such relief. I was like, ah, oh, okay, it's fine. Men and women can be friends. It's good. This is good. His response was just so understanding, so cordial. I was like, yes, this is what I need. This is what everybody needs in a friend. Oh, I was so wrong. Now a whole month passed. We didn't have any Zoom calls. We only spoke to each other a maximum of twice a week via message, just sharing passages from books or from films that he wanted me to watch, that sort of thing. Importantly, during this time, he went abroad. And so obviously we were living... Okay, hold on. Cognitive. He was being kind and letting her off the hook. Okay. You know what's interesting is like, so she already set it up in the video. I, I think you maybe missed the beginning. She already set it up as we're about to get a bomb dropped on us. So everything he's doing, we assume is a lie because she's about to prove it's a lie. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm reading the story incorrectly, but it feels like kid is about to drop a huge bomb on us. But you're reading the situation as if there's not a bomb ahead of him or ahead of us, which is true. So if you were just looking at these guys' messages in general, you're right, totally normal, kids relieved, I'm relieved, but it's not real. That's why we know it's not real because she already set us up to let us know it's a trap. Like Star Wars, it's a trap, you know? So Cognitive is still in chat being very like optimistic about it, but we already know it's a trap. So I don't know if you missed the beginning of her video, but it's a trap. So now the question is, where's the, where's the bomb, you know? Otherwise, yes, if he meant everything he said, then it's not a trap. And that's the difference. When you are observing a person, you have to ask yourself, is this a good person or a bad person? Is this a good person who's being honest and transparent? Or is this a bad person who's playing 4D chess with you and is actually trying to get into your pants instead of just bluntly asking for it? He is probably going to turn out to be a bad person who's playing 4D chess with her. And so let's find out. Now out of the blue, and I mean literally out of the blue, a whole month has passed. I have not spoken to him like aside from him sending me a song that he wanted me to listen to, me saying, nice song, that's great. Hope you're doing well. Check in later. Nothing else. We said nothing else. So this is completely out of the blue. I get a seven minute voice message. Now it's times like these when I wish that I had a moral compass that was a little bit more shaky than what it is and that I could actually just play this voice message because it is a work of art, okay? It's beautiful. Oh, Picasso no. could Picasso, she mentioned Picasso. <laughs> Never. But alas, that is sadly not going to happen. But I can tell you some of the very interesting things that he said. Basically, Lachlan told me that his romantic feelings had actually grown a lot stronger since I had told him about my sexuality. Hold on, I've been working on the on the face. I can change her. She's a lesbian. I can change her, bros. <laughs> Just give me 10 seconds with her, bros. I can change her. Yo, he got more into her. He's like, oh, you a lesbian? Ooh, that's my flavor. <laughs> He's like, that's my favorite. A lesbian? That's my favorite, he said. He found himself thinking about me all day. Even though he didn't want to send this voice message, he simply had to send it. Ooh, Even though he, ha he had to, girls. He had to. Girl, Kidology, the lesbian, just needed to know my dick is hard for her. I just had to tell you. Bro, get over it, bro. He accepts the answer that I have given him. There's nothing more that he wants to do than to be with me in the same space, to come and stay with me in my house. I'm sorry, I just have to smile through the pain and the melodrama. And even though in this voice message, he told me that he accepts the answer that I gave him, that he knows my answer. Am I sure? Was my appraisal of myself correct? He said that I have been nothing more than kind and understanding to him, but still, am I sure? Now, I think the finale of this voice- Are you sure you're a lesbian? Because I really feel like I could change your mind, girl. 
This message is perhaps the most important aspect of it. This is a direct quote. I will get over this because people do every day, but I'm not in a mad rush to get over it or to exercise it like it's some kind of demon. Now, brethren, you. Ugh, see, when someone's not into me, I lose all interest instantly. And I'm like, cool, let's be friends or do something else. I just don't. If someone's not into you, bro, how is that not the ultimate? Like, cool. Okay, cool. Let's do something else. I don't get, I don't get it. Yeah, I'm looking at you because I'm building this parasociality, okay? Because, you know, this is clearly all that I'm worth. If you're in love with somebody and they don't reciprocate your feelings and you still want them in your life as a friend, you need to get over your feelings as quickly, as rapidly as possible. It is so unhealthy, but also so selfish to the object of your desires to just wallow in those feelings and especially to let them know that you are not going to try to get Get over your feelings for them that you're not going to try to like sort of exercise them you're not in a mad rush or whatever he said because i'm in a much better place mentally right now and we will get into that because that is very crucial context i didn't realize how unhealthy how toxic and i hate using this word but it's a perfect description of this i did not realize how unhealthy and how toxic this was and i also didn't realize how as i said selfish this was because it ultimately expected me to be friends with a person who was expressing their romantic feelings for me, respecting that, appreciating that, and having to somehow balance those feelings with being their friend, and somehow having to help them keep that boundary when the mere existence of our relationship creates friction or completely distorts this boundary, makes this boundary non-existent. So I am as much to blame for the fact that after getting this voice message, I did ignore him for like a good two weeks, but I still said, thank you for your vulnerability. You do not have to apologize for this at all. I really do understand and appreciate this. Ugh, I'm so annoyed at how much emotional labor women do automatically. I'm so annoyed with all of us. I'm so, I really appreciate your vulnerability. Tell him to suck. I do work on this when I see someone and I'm like, I initially want to do the emotional labor for you, but I have really practiced because, you know, women are socialized to not do the emotional labor for fucking men. Okay. Jesus Christ. She said, no, F off, F off you little twat. She said, no, she's a lesbian. She's into the women's. How dare this man fucking expect her to do emotional labor for basically a girl he just met when she literally was like, with respect, I'm a lesbian. And he's like, but I have flea wings. <laughs> like, what? No, I do not appreciate your honesty. Keep it to yourself, motherfucker. And what you have said, but we should talk about this in person. I was as much to blame for my response to this. I, I girl, I just want to respond like that sucks. <laughs> like, go to therapy. I was in a terrible mental state at this time. Again, I will explain all of this, but still, that's no excuse for how stupid I was. Damn. And I'm just as much to blame for all of this based on no, my no. naivety. You were, no, no. Oh, naivety. She's about to use the word naive. We discussed this in the last thing. Okay, no, she does not have to apologize to anyone. Well, she can learn this lesson, but okay. This is, he, ooh, the amount of emotional labor she, he's making her do right now. This is what she needs to apologize her, for her to herself for doing, emotional labor for this twat of a man. But that's it, okay? I said that there's no need to apologize for anything. I said that what he said was entirely valid. And okay, you know, we get it, girl. We've all been there. We've all been there, girl. Relatable. Ooh, I'm getting upset for her because I've been there. Ooh. Understandable. And I suggested that we speak. This is, I'd rather burn a bridge than do emotional labor for a man. I swear to God, these fucking entitled men, these entitled men. Burn the bridge, Z. Set it on fire like an arson. In person over Zoom about this because I think it's just better to say things face to face to people. I think there's just a lot more transparency and honesty, a lot less curation of messages and what you're going to say, etc. And I really think that the reason I said this is because I just personally knew how terrible it felt to be rejected. As I said, for the past year, I especially since men, we've been told as women, men are never vulnerable. When men are vulnerable with you, women shoot them down. Okay, well, I'll be very sensitive to men being vulnerable with me. Hey, now that I'm vulnerable with you, can you like let me trap you emotionally to do all this emotional labor? And it's like, no, <gasps> she's a bitch. She's BPD. And it's like, what the f***? These men will literally give you vulnerabilities. You'll feel sorry for them. And then they will turn it around and be like, I can't believe you're not doing my emotional labor for me. You're a And I'm like, what just happened? No more emotional labor for these men. Absolutely not, bro.
You have to earn emotional labor for me. And when I tell you that I have been rejected by every single woman that I had been dating, and by dating, I meant that I went on like three dates, probably maximum with a woman. And then she decided that she just wanted to be friends and that was the end of it. Or I just got ghosted and that was the end of it. That is basically the story of my life, dating woman, of how it had been. And so this feeling of how awful it was to be rejected, how absolutely gut-wrenching it was to be rejected was viscerally at the forefront of my mind. Mm in this whole relationship of course. that I was in with Lachlan. Of course. I really didn't want to inflict. You want to people, you want to meet people where they are. You want to be kind to people. You want to reward them for their vulnerabilities. Ooh, that's the question. Are they truly being vulnerable or are they trying to f***ing trick you? Are they truly being open and honest or are they trying to trick you? Cognitive says, but she said she knew he wanted a relationship and they were going to build it slowly as a friendship. But then later on says I was a lesbian the whole time who dates only women. She wasn't sure she was going through the transition of officially being lesbian or bisexual because she had been bisexual her whole life and then well dating him so it kind of seeing him so basically he definitely made her realize she was a lesbian <laughs> that's what it is he definitely made her realize like um well not that he specifically but that it was a part of her journey right so like She's realizing like, oh yeah, I'm definitely like, he was probably the last, She he was probably the last guy she maybe thought like maybe and then was like, nope, definitely I'm a lesbian. So that's pretty normal. A lot of people go through that journey, right? the same kinds of feelings that I was having, especially at this point, very dark feelings and emotions that I was having onto him. And I really assured myself that I wasn't going to do this to somebody who I believed to be my friend. And ultimately mm. what I really thought and what I really valued and thought that I appreciated about this friendship was that even though he had romantic feelings for me, he was still willing to and wanted to be my friend. That's what I thought was really like significant about this, that this person wasn't actually rejecting me. In a weird sort of way, this person wasn't rejecting me, even though I was rejecting them, and that therefore I mustn't reject them for who they are. I must accept them for who they are. And this leads me to lesson number four, which is ultimately tallying all of the red flags, because this is what I should have started doing from this point onward. And by this point onward, I mean from this Zoom call onward. Now, this Zoom call was the beginning of the end, I think. It was an example of what our Zoom call calls became after this. This Zoom call was a Zoom call. Yeah, to be fair, Z and him started off as friends only and to see where it went. It wasn't, they were not dating, dating. They were friendly and open to the possibility, but they weren't actually dating. So she didn't even break up with him. What she did was make it clear she was never going to date him, which is different. So I correct what I said earlier because it made it sound like they were dating. They were not actually, they were in a situationship, which is different. They were not boyfriend and girlfriend. They were seeing if their friendship would go somewhere else. And when she realized it definitely wouldn't, she told him. Then he said, I totally get it. No problem. And then he said, actually, my dick is harder for you now that I know you're a lesbian. And now that you realized you're a lesbian because, you know, men love a challenge. And then she said, ew. Also, thank you for your vulnerability. And he said, you're welcome. Here's all three inches. No judgment on three inches. That's a lot. I don't want to body shame here, for real, for real. I mean, what do you even need a penis for anyways? It's not even very useful. Use your fingers. All which involved him asking me repeatedly whether I was sure about my sexuality, whether I was sure that I... And now he's questioning the lesbianism. ...couldn't possibly be with him. And it was very noticeable to me that me saying, yes, I'm pretty sure, that that wasn't reaching home, that this should have really been the end of our friendship. But of course it wasn't. And of course, the prying into my personal life got a bit worse. Because Ooh. he wasn't taking my no for an answer, I posed a question to him, which is something that I just learned from therapy. Usually when you put something or you pose it as a question, which puts your example or what you're saying into an example and somebody has to answer it, makes it a bit more digestible and understandable. So I posed this question to him. I said, would you be happy being in an intimate sexual relationship with somebody that is with me who isn't attracted to you? Lachlan's response was the ultimate red flag because Lachlan's response was, with all due respect, that's for me to decide. I <laughs> What did he say? He said, with all due respect, uh, I will break your consent whether you like it or not. He just threatened a consent violation, bro. That is a threat. That's a viol that's a viol that's a violation if I ever did hear one, bro. No way, bro. I couldn't believe my ears, but I am very, very happy and very proud of myself that I did not let anything. You know how I say some guys just be grapey? 
Even if they've never graped? That's grapey language. That's my opinion. Grapey language is men who say, well, you think you don't want me, but you don't know how good this dick is. Wait till I show you. That's that's grapey to me, bro. That's a crazy thing to say, bro. That's a crazy thing to say. Thing like that influenced me to saying that, okay, let's see how this goes or let's get to know each other, you know, in the way that you want us to get to know each other. And so I said, no, we are just friends. This isn't going anywhere. And he accepted that, or at least I thought he accepted that. And I thought that we had really made it past sort of a bit of a, a bit of an awkward stage or an awkward phase of our friendship. And this is red flag number two. In the same Zoom call, after we had gone past this awkward phase, he suggested that we go on holiday together as friends. This was in order to celebrate this new chapter of our this man 40 chessing a grape strategy bro let me get her alone let me let me take her away from everything she knows let her let bro this is a 40 chess grape strategy bro this is my opinion this is not a reflection of z's opinion this is my opinion this is this is scummy man behavior bro this is scummy human behavior gender aside bro so inappropriate bro Oh, gross. Our friendship, as well as this new chapter in things that were happening in his personal life. And you know what? On reflection, I think, why did I say yes to this? And I think there's two reasons why I said yes. Said yes to what? Said yes to the vacation? No. To us going on holiday. Why no. Oh, oh, is this, I blame people pleasing. Tell me she's going to say people pleasing. Am I predicting it? Did she do it because she's a people pleaser? he just told me that he was in love with me and that he didn't want to get over his romantic feelings right after he had said that it was for him to decide whether he could be in intimate carnal relations with a woman who wasn't attracted to him. I think there's two reasons why I said yes to going on holiday. I think the first reason was because I was getting somewhat annoyed with him asking me to come and see me at my house. I don't have anybody come to my house to like where I live. I live in a shed. Okay, bro, I'll come see you. I'll come visit. You want to get coffee? We both live in Europe, don't we? We should hang out, Z, bro. I, well, I can't leave the house right now. I'm in my hustle era. But like, okay, listen. We'll have coffee. You should come to Croatia. We'll get coffee. Don't hang out with men. Hang out with married women. Because I respect you, okay? Ugh. House, but I've never, ever had people over into my space. It's just not something that makes me comfortable. And obviously, I also just like my privacy. Shoot me. I also think I went wrong because of the following. Men can never understand why females can have male friends, but we tend to believe that we can have male friends. And the reason why we kind of think like this is because we would rather have a friend who secretly loves us than a female friend that secretly hates us. Usually when men don't like each other, they separate from each other. Women, when they don't like each other, they'll make reservations together and they'll still keep in... Uh, uh, no, no, no. When liars and people who lack introspection don't like each other, they will hang out. Now, nah, I just end a friendship. Bitch. I like you, but not that much, bitch. okay? I, this is why I'm honest. This is why I'm an honest. Bitch. I love you, but I don't wanna hang out with you right now. Or honestly, girl, it's not a vibe. Honestly, girl, I'm not vibing with you right now. And look, it might hurt your feelings, but we don't have to vibe all the time, okay? No way am I gonna go make reservations with a bitch I don't like. There ain't no fucking way I would do this to myself. Is this a neurotypical thing? Is this like a straight girl thing? Why are you all suffering so much? How do the neurodivergents and the gays have so much issue with their mental health and the heterosexuals don't realize like, like you do too. And it's this, this is your version of mental health issues. You are putting yourself, you're self-harming. Why are you self-harming bros? In each other's lives. For men, if they play a sport together, they can pretty much be friends. For us, you can do everything right with a female friendship. All it takes is a birthday gone wrong or a boyfriend that they don't like. And the entire- God, this is so misogynist. What is this? Misogynist? What is it, internalized misogyny? What is this? I hate girl bubbles like this. This is so misogynistic. See, these bubbles are not about girls. They are about misogyny. You are centering men in your life. What? This is just bad friendships. Higher friendship is destroyed and there's a safety in a male friendship. Yes, Julia says female friendships thrive off insecurity and validation sometimes. No, bad friendships do. This is not gendered. This is bad. These are bad friendships. These are bad friendships. Like the friendship Sneeko's in with his girlfriends right now. Look at Sneeko and Andrew Tate and Myron. Mm -hmm. If Sneeko came out doing gay old friends, you know they would, re they would reject him. They'd kick him out of the group. You could do everything right and they'll still kick you out. I think I really wanted a friend. And I would rather have a friend who loved me than a friend who hated me or secretly disliked me or not have a friend at all. But importantly, what I thought was love or a friend who secretly loved me was actually a friend who secretly, or actually at this point quite openly, had limerence for me. And because I don't want to waste any more emotional labor on this friendship, I'm just going to get the Wikipedia definition of limerence in order to 
add some detailed foundation to the rest of the story time. Limerence is a state of mind which results from romantic feelings for another person and typically includes intrusive, melancholic thoughts or tragic concerns for the object of one's affection, as well as a desire to form or maintain a relationship with the object of love and to have one's feelings reciprocated. But what I really think is important here is the inclusion of intrusive thoughts. Mm, interesting of melancholic thoughts as well as tragic concerns for the object of your desire because all three of these things are ultimately how Lachlan saw me in the entirety of our relationship from manufacturing our meeting our encounters to watching all of my videos where if you have watched all of my videos you can see that I very much I would say come across as a bit of a damsel in distress at times I'm very lonely I'm very down I suffer from clinical depression and other things that I I'm not going to get into, but I can see how that can come across to somebody like Lachlan. And from this Zoom call onwards, things... That's why I don't like white knights. I don't like men who save women. It's a red flag when I see age gap relationships where the older person is always saving the younger person. I don't like that that energy in a person is such a turnoff to me because even if somebody's giving you off that energy, like... Your desire to only objectify them in order to save or uplift them up to give yourself the credit is disgusting. It is so gross. And I think you should go to therapy. And I think Lachlan needs to go to therapy. But that, in that, I can fix her. I can fix him. That idea of like, they need me. And you're just helping people to fulfill your own ego, bro. Gross. Now, there's a difference between helping people to maintain your values. I think that's reasonable. But to help people just to brag about it is gross or to have them indebted to you. That's fucked up. Started to very much exhibit limerence. What I expect. Oh, wait. Cognitive says, is there any chance that men act like white knights because women respond to being saved? Yes. And both are toxic. Women who need to be saved are just as toxic as the men who want to save them. I said what I said. She noticed is that he wanted to talk to me. A and that's often why I say it takes two people to be in a toxic relationship. Because let's be real. If you're a woman who needs men to save you then you're toxic enough to let a white knight come into your life. Congratulations. That's why you guys are co or, uh, codependent and bonding on trauma. And that's why you guys think you're in a perfect relationship because you're the girl who needs to be saved and you're the man who gets to save her. And you're not actually getting to know each other. You're not actually sure where the relationship is going. You're just riding the wave of, oh, I found my white knight and oh, I found my princess. Um, have you seen Shrek? Just because you're a princess and the prince is supposed to save you doesn't mean it shouldn't be an ogre. As opposed to understanding, Hold on, I, gotta Zoom, rewind her. I can see how that can come across to somebody like Lachlan. And from this Zoom call onwards, things started to very much exhibit limerence. What I especially noticed is that he wanted to talk to me a lot more frequently than before. As opposed to understanding that I'm just a person who does not do virtual communication whatsoever, this was now becoming a problem for him. He wants stalker, stalker. He's a stalker. He's coming for kidology. He's a stalker, thinks he can change the queerness in her reality. He to talk to me a lot more frequently, at least once a week over Zoom. He also started ending all of his messages, not just sporadic messages as had been the case previously, but every single one of his messages with a kiss or an ex. Now, this is a very, I think, British Ugh. thing. I don't really see this beyond Britain, but typically when you are romantically interested in somebody, when you're flirting with somebody, I especially see this on dating apps, a guy will always end his text with an ex to indicate, you know, affection. And this Ugh. became very noticeable to me, not just the exes, but also how he's- Yo this is this okay first of all alice um i fell flat because i was falling into your mother but also okay i feel like this is the moment z should have ended the friendship like you're being creepy but you know what i've been here i've done this we make excuses we come up with stories we tell ourselves we're overreacting we tell ourselves we're not being cool enough and then this is why now the moment i'm like no i don't want to do that and everyone's like why not why not i'm like no i don't want to do that i don't want to do it no. And everyone's like, oh, you're so weird. He's not meaning anything by it. Just like, why can't you just do this? No, no, mm -mm. nope. Cause now that's what it is. I know I can feel it in my, cause I've had this happen. Kid, this is so relatable, girl. This story is so relatable. My twenties really taught me, bro. But still you'll learn the lesson in different ways with different people. Let me tell you started using lovely and my dear in messages and this was all very suddenly after the zoom call where i had said that okay let's go on holiday together now there was a day when he wanted to wait julia says it's hard to get into the details but sometimes it's hard to have boundaries when it's not a two-way street boundaries are never a two-way street boundaries are never a two-way street 
They are only two-way street when we're talking about something different. The boundaries I'm talking about, girly, has to do with you and only you. You set up the boundaries, not ultimatums, not threats, boundaries. Hey, I love you, bro. I'm excited for you to live your life and all that. Uh, Reach out to me when it feels like a good vibe. And then if they reach out to you only when they need help, you say, hey, I'm sorry, I can't help you with that today. And they go, what do you mean you can't help me with that? You're my sister. And you go, I'm so sorry. I really can't help you with that today. This is this is all I can help you with. And I, I just can't help you with that today. And then you start to set down boundaries. And then they start to realize like, oh, you're standing up for yourself without tearing them down. This isn't about them giving you boundaries. It's about you as a sister and as a sibling, because we've all been there. And with a friend or whatever saying, hey, I love you. I can't actually do that for you. And I'm not going to feel guilted into doing something that's against my values. The only thing that makes me feel guilty is when I've betrayed my values, right? So like you you tell yourself, because look, I've got siblings. I've got complications with people in my life and I love them. And it doesn't matter what they're doing. What matters is what I do regardless of what they're doing. Regardless of how badly people are acting, I don't act badly. But I'm a human, so sometimes we fail and sometimes I'm a bitch, but you know what I mean. To have a Zoom call and I didn't respond to his message for reasons that I will explain momentarily. And mind you, we hadn't scheduled anything. This wasn't that we'd scheduled to have a call on a specific day at a specific time and then I had just blown him off or was ignoring him completely after I'd agreed to it. No, 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 not at all. So he starts calling me. He calls me once, calls me twice, calls me three times, calls me nine times. I miss all of this because I'm asleep and it's very late at night. And obviously in the morning, I apologize for all I apologize. I fell asleep at around 1800 for a nap and only woke up now. Sorry to worry you. I hope you get some sleep. And again, my apologies. I still have to learn how to tell time. I'm really struggling with converting all the numbers, but I'm getting there. Of this. I think what's really important here is his response to my apology. And remember this in relation to everything that I said about limerence, you know, intrusive, Uh-oh. melancholic, and tragic thoughts about the object of your concern. <sighs> Sorry that I called so many times. Sometimes you just have a feeling or idea in your head, and the more you try and ignore it, the more intense it becomes. I was about ready to drive up to where you live today, armed with a hammer, and fight my way through hordes of Yorkshiremen to get to you. Old boy style. <laughs> Yo, this is so inappropriate, bro. Sometimes you just have a feeling or an idea in your head and the more you try and ignore it, the more intense it becomes. This is why queer representation is so important. Ma'am, she's a lesbian, but also she said no, even if kidology was straight, even if she was bisexual, even if she was pansexual, she said no. This is what I mean to say, look, you might not all have raped somebody, but a lot of people are conditioned to think rape is okay. This is why I say I would choose a bear instead of a man in the woods. Because if you get stuck with a Lachlan, do you know what I'm saying? This is why women choose the bear. This is why women choose the bear. Because what are the chances I end up up with a Lachlan? What are the chances when I can say, man, I end up with him? Man, I choose the bear, bro. Fuck you all. I choose the bear. <laughs> Slayer says, does anyone have this guy's contact info so I know how to avoid him? <laughs> like, bro. Five mile way through hordes of Yorkshiremen to get to you. Old boy style. And then, of Girl. course, I play the gift. Oh my God. We have eventually another Zoom call, basically just to talk about this holiday, this very important holiday, which is- Oh my God. And then she went on holiday with him after this, maybe. Oh my God. We don't know, no spoilers, but oh my God. These are the lessons you learn in your 20s, hopefully, sometimes in your 30s and 40s, but these are the lessons you're supposed to learn in life. This is a person you block and tell them to f***ing go to therapy. Is the ultimate finale of this entire saga. Oh my goodness. You are not ready. He and- She's not playing into it. She's playing into the friendship. So Kidology's brain thinks she's sending the gif and playing into the friendship. She thinks he's being funny, but also she doesn't understand that like he is reading it as her being more open, see, open-minded to dating him when she's not even thinking about dating him. That's the problem. So Kidology is being naive. I do agree with you there, Fish. She doesn't seem to be aware. I agree she's being naive, which she even said herself. And these are the things like you do learn. And look, you learn them at different times in your life and you learn them in different ways. Look, this will show up in your life later as a established, famous author who's 50 years old and speaks very good, whatever, poetry, English, okay? This will show up later in your life as a very established model who has millions of followers, who looks very sane and reasonable. This will show up in your life as a middle-aged person at your local donut shop who feeds children on the weekends. This person will show up in your life again and you think you'll see them coming because you learned the lesson before 
But the proof of you learning the lesson is you leave the moment you see the red flag. And that is really difficult because the red flag, you have to decipher, am I seeing a red flag or somebody who's wounded? And also this is why people do eventually stop helping people because every time you help somebody, you risk the chance that they're a Lachlan or a stalker or a rapist. Like you don't know who you're helping. So there is a fear of helping people because like what if you are helping the wrong person? So just FYI, we've all learned these lessons and yet I still have to be diligent because the, le- you know, the lessons come in different packages and I haven't gotten all the packages yet. So what if I open up a package I think is perfectly safe, but there's a red flag in it. I got to be able to decipher the red flag. You know, Mimi says, do you think she let it go on because of the loneliness? Well, she, she said, well, she said that she, she, the loneliness played a role which I think it does for all of us, right? Yeah. I mean, I would argue even the friends I've made online this year, I should have known ahead of time. But also, it's like you don't want to doubt people. You want to believe people are more healed or at a better place in life. So sometimes you have to get to know them better to realize like, oh, shit. Like, you're kind of crazy still. But like, hey, I get it. We've all been there. But the problem is, is like, you don't know till you know. And that's another thing, too. Kid didn't know. She wasn't sure. So then you have to get to the point where you're sure about people. And that is a very difficult place to get into because are you ever sure? Are you ever sure about people? And then I I recommend this part of life, which is like, hey, I'm not sure. But uh, because I'm not sure, that's reason enough to say no, thank you. I don't need to be sure to say no, thank you. I just need to be unsure enough to be to say uh, no thank you. Insisted on picking me up to go on this holiday. It's not something that I want. I'm not interested in having somebody pick me up. I'm quite happy to go to the holiday destination. And he wasn't, again, as per usual, taking no for an answer. He insisted that he was going to pick me up. He insisted that he wanted to come and see where I lived. And again, crucially, he said that he wanted to see the Yorkshiremen that I live with. Yorkshiremen are a major feature in this story. And I want you to have this image of Yorkshiremen. This image of Yorkshiremen, because I'm quite certain that this is the image of Yorkshiremen that Lachlan had in his mind throughout this entire friendship that we had. And I'd like to get onto a bit more of a serious note, which is sort of a bit of foundational context for the finale of this story, I guess you can call it. (laughs) Basically, uh, during this whole situation and this year, I haven't been very well mentally. From mid-February to the beginning of May, I had the most intrusive thoughts that I have had at least since I was a second year student at university. And such thoughts are nothing new to me, but this was quite new in that this was so intrusive that for the first time I had actually set a definitive date to call it quits. And I do think reflecting now and being in a far better place now and just with everything, I do think... Damn, Kid was really popping a bubble and facing herself. Okay, hold on. I want to rewind that. Time, I had actually set a definitive date to call it quits. Mm. And I do think reflecting now and being in a far better place now and just with everything, I do think that that setting of a date was very much a sort of weight off my shoulders because mm. everything that was causing me so much pain and so much suffering now seemed like it was going to end. And so I could actually cope. She saved herself by giving herself relief. She took... She took, she was building up tension and she popped a little, she like needled a little bit of a hole and let out some of the steam, which calmed her down enough to recalibrate. She didn't need a man to save her. She saved herself, which we all should. We should not rely on other people to save us. We should save ourselves. Good for her. Until that date came. <sighs> so. so when you're in that position, she, yes, Connor said it best. She wasn't, she wasn't just looking for connection. She needed it. Yeah, this is a big deal, especially after the last conversation she and I had. We knew Kid's always facing herself, and that's the biggest thing you can ever face. Look at Kid doing the work. Look at Z doing the work. When I say it is very hard to face yourself, this is what I mean. It is not easy to face yourself. This is hard. This is real, bro. 
So during the whole thing, this whole situation, this whole friendship and everything that was going on, all these feelings, this romance that he was having for me, all this love, uh, this was really very insignificant to me. Uh, this was not at all at the front of my concerns. This was not a priority for me. This really wasn't something that I was thinking about. With all due respect to Lachlan, he was not featuring in my mind whatsoever as anything but a person that I just had to keep appearances up with. This was a reason why I said sure to going on holiday because I really wasn't thinking about the realities of potentially having to go on holiday with him at this mm. point. My exit date was way before this holiday, so I really didn't... Sure, why not? Let's go on holiday. And as is indicated by his increasing, I would say, upset at me not responding to him, I was clearly going through things that he didn't know about. It was no fault of his. I am very private about these sorts of things, especially when I'm going through these kinds of things. But he also didn't show any concern or any sort of asking, especially when I would hint, I guess, in a way or indirectly say, you know, I'm going through depression. I'm going through a bout of depression at the moment. Sorry for not responding to you. Mm. Sorry for my absence, etc. And I think you really know that somebody isn't your friend when you apologize to them and you tell them about your struggles or about your pain, not in a lot of detail even, and their immediate and first response is to make it about them. And this is exactly what Lachlan would do. In his mind, me saying, I'm sorry, I don't want to speak right now, actually meant that I don't want to speak to him right now. And eventually this was clearly becoming a bit too much for him. He was becoming very passive aggressive and this was clearly something that was affecting him. That Hey, sorry for my absence. I've been a bit down in the dumps this weekend, so I'm not really up to talking quite uh, stop being annoyed. I'll message this week for a call if you're around. I hope you're doing well and staying healthy in the meantime. Okay. Could I just ask, are you annoyed at me about earlier in the week? If so, let me know. I know that you're not some helpless flower who needs checking up on and can't look after herself. Rather, the complete opposite. I'm sorry if I'll, if all my missed calls gave that impression and you know what you mean to, He says, and you know what you mean to me. So I just became a bit fixated on the initial small worry that I felt about you. <sighs> if you're maybe up for talking for just a little bit later on, maybe just 30 minutes or so, then I'm around all evening. Maybe can't. <laughs> maybe it can take your mind off things, but if it's. If it's, it's, uh, but if it's, uh, okay, if not, but it's okay, if not, just ignore this. I need to shut the fuck up sometimes speak to you soon. And I hope you sleep well and feel better next week. X. Yo. <laughs> Yo. This is canon. This is a canon experience, bro. This is a canon experience. Every person has got to meet a Lachlan or maybe it's a, if it's a part of your story and realize like, okay, this is it. This is the thing. Like, this is the thing I'm looking out for. Violated her consent multiple times, crossed boundaries, emotionally dumped, didn't ask about her, made it about him. Oh, and then she goes, I can't talk. And then he goes, well, maybe you can, if you feel like it, we can talk tonight. This man is a consent violator time and time and time and time and time again. Do you know what made me so attracted to my husband? Is I would send him very similar messages. I'd be like, hey, I'm busy with work. I'm really tired. When we were courting, of course, like even when we were dating, but when we were courting, courting, getting to know each other in a real way, I would be like, I really got to go to work. He's like, hey, never worry about needing to sleep or go to work. You tell me when you're available and I'm available, Okay. Like he had a job and he was working. We were both have opposite schedules. I was in America. He was in Europe. And that was the most attractive thing about him versus men I had dated during COVID. Um, I dated some guys. And look, when I date girls, guys, I never have to talk about it because they always go wonderfully. <laughs> the girls were great during COVID. But the guys, there was a guy who was like, hey, I know you need to go to sleep, but uh, I work nights. So do you want to stay up and talk to me? And I said, no, I really need to sleep. It's really important that I stay asleep, that I eat that I take care of all my, you know, my stuff for my mental health. Like, no, I can't, I can't stay up. Like I need to go to bed. And he's like, oh, come on. I want to spend time with you. And I was like, no. And that was it. I was like, I'm not interested in you block. Bro, don't fuck with my sleep, bro. Cause look at the end of the day, I'm being very forthcoming. I'm saying I have work in the morning. I've got to go to sleep and I need you to want me to be better, not worse. 
I need you to be better, not worse. And by the way, cognitive, the reason you're giving him such a benefit of the doubt in the chat is because you're not accepting that he's an asshole. You keep thinking he's innocent and you need to learn the fucking difference because I have a feeling you're probably wondering if you're him. Because at the end of the day, if you keep identifying with this man, you should go to therapy. This is not a good person. This is a fucked up person. A good person, a mature person, a healthy person doesn't fucking act like this. A healthy person could look like this, but 20 minutes ago before she said, I'm a lesbian, I'm not interested in you. Not after, okay? She said, I'm a lesbian. I'm not interested. I want to be friends with you. That's it. He violates her consent over and over again. This is a fucked up person. And if you identify with him, you are a fucked up person. Go to therapy. Go to therapy. Talk to your priest. Do something. This is not okay behavior. Look, you know I'm all about the nuance. You know I give exceptions. I meet people where they are. I, I try to always meet people where they are. Marco says, how do we, are we sure he isn't just ignorant? How ignorant do you have to be for a grown woman to tell you I'm not interested 17 times? When do you get it? When do you stop being ignorant? When does the ignorance go from ignorance to deliberate consent violation? Tell me that. She has told him. She showed us so many text messages. She's already said it. Sure, the first time. Maybe the second time. Not the fucking fifth time, bros. Ignorance is when you don't know. A mistake is when you don't know. A violation is when you know and you still do it. He knew. She told him. He didn't even have to guess. She told him. This is a grown-up. No. This is a grown-up. Fuck you. Fuck everybody. I'm so sick of everybody. You're all so annoying. Not you guys. I love you. But you know, I'm so annoyed. Well, how do we know he just wasn't making a mistake? Because she told him. Bro, you feed a vegan cheese before because you didn't know they were vegan? That's a mistake. You feed a vegan cheese after they told you they were vegan? That's on purpose. Z told him, I'm a vegan. And he was like, are you sure though? Cheese is really good. <laughs> Vegans know cheese is good, bro. They know it's good. They just don't want it, bro. Just because she doesn't want it, even if it's good, doesn't mean it has anything to do with you. I don't like Evangelion. Doesn't mean it's a bad anime. It's still a good anime. I just don't like it. Stop trying to convince me to like Evangelion. Oh, you'll just, if you really watch it this way, you'll really like it. Bitch, we can have different tastes. No, no, no. If you just watch it in this way, you'll really like it. Listen, maybe later, but probably not. And also it's up to me. You don't get to pressure me into liking an anime, cheese or vagina, or in this case, we are closed for business. I'm so sick of this. I'm so sick of it. I'm so sick of it. Look at me. I'll, leave, I'll give so many people space, bro. You know how lenient I, I, I am on stupid men. I'm the most lenient bitch on stupid men. I am so nice. I let them burn bridges and still have empathy. I let them literally run around doing horrible things to people. And I'm like, they'll find it. They'll find their way. I let men get away with so much bullshit. I'm so over it, bros. All you fucking useless men who keep sliding into my DMs telling me your sad fucking stories, go tell your mothers because I am sick of playing mom to you. Stop bothering your female friends. Stop bothering people because your mother didn't raise you correctly or slash you never listened to her because you're a narcissist. I'm so sick of it. I am so sick of these fucking men. Brittany, you just don't understand, Brittany, though. Listen to me, Brittany. Listen to me, Brittany. You just don't understand me. Bro, listen, Brittany, you'll get it, though, if I explain it to you, bro. Okay, explain it to me. <laughs> Explain it to me. Oh, it's everyone else's fault except your own. Okay, cool, bro. You really just explained it to me. It's everybody else's fault except for this bitch right here. Except this bitch right here. Okay, cool, 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 cool. It's everybody else's fault except the grown man who keeps hitting on the lesbian. Sure. Okay, bitch. Okay, bitch. I'm so fucking sick of all of you. Oh my God, if you're in my audience, you're gay. I will handle no straight men anymore in my audience. I'm just kidding. I love the straight men. You're my favorite. Just kidding. Oh my God. Oh. That I was not responding to his messages and that I especially wasn't making time to have Zoom calls with him. And so for the first time in our friendship, I actually said what I wanted to say. Note to future self, you are not in a good friendship if you can't say what you want to say or you're afraid of saying what you want to say at fear of the other person. And so I said my bit. Okay, Lachlan, oh, I get the impression that you're upset with me for not being there for you during some clearly difficult times. I understand and sympathize, but I'm also going through things which I deal with differently to you and won't apologize for that. I'm trying my utmost to be patient with your desire to not move on from your feelings for me. I get it and have 
no issue with it. But I cannot, as a result, play some kind of potential relationship that won't be. I can't fit into some ideal of a relationship you seem to have for us. I do think we need to speak about this in person, especially before we go on holiday, because this is starting to feel a little unhealthy and potentially nice, quite nice. devastating to what mm -hmm. I thought was a good, easygoing f Ooh, the fact that she even wrote him a message. Oh, she's so nice. She's so nice that she even wrote him a message in the first place. She's so nice. Friendship. Anyway, I really do hope you're doing well and looking after yourself physically and mentally. Best for this week. I could have said a lot more, but at that time, I think that was all I had enough mental energy for. <laughs> and his response to this was that I no longer had to worry about his romantic feelings for me, that it wasn't a problem anymore. And also that- Uh-uh, we're going to read that, girl. You don't have to worry about this- whole not moving on from my feelings nonsense anymore that was a manifestation of me giving up giving up on finding a fulfilling fulfilling relationship a rewarding livelihood my opinion of myself has been low enough that i believe this kind of unrequited love situation was the best i could hope for which is obviously absurd and it put this emotional burden on you that was completely unfair and unsustainable you deserve far better from me as a friend all month i've been burying my head in the sand and being too afraid to deal with things like an adult but i can't just give up and as I know exactly what giving up looks like, and it's terrible. So I won't go through blank like I went through blank. I will think better of myself and be better of those around me. Thank you for how patient you've been. I hope you have a lovely blank and look forward to hearing what you've been up to X. No, unacceptable, bullshit, don't believe it. The, I believe this the way I believe Boogie has cancer. Oh, I said what I said worry about his romantic feelings for me that it wasn't a problem anymore and also that i deserved far better from him as a friend and i i had hope at that point i guess i, I we all have hope girl we are hopeful bitches it's the queer in us the queer in us hopes i hate that about us <laughs> But I also love that about us. Had hope. The next lesson can be taken from what I like to call the last Zoom supper. <sighs> now this was a point when both myself and Lachlan were in, I thought, a much better state in our friendship. And I personally was in a much better state in my personal life. As you can see, I am well and alive. And there is a reason for this. I She's looking gorge. You're looking beautiful. I decided that I had nothing left to live for. I had everything I needed. I had a date set and I was, I was done. I was in my mind. I was done. Mm -hmm. And as I said, I was very mentally, not just unwell, but also quite mentally erratic at this point. And I made a decision. And this decision, it... <sighs> Now it doesn't make sense to me, and so I cannot imagine that it would make sense to you either, which is perfectly understandable. But, you know, it, that was what I was thinking at the time. And what I had decided was that I wanted to have sex before it was over. Now, no, 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 I get it. I get it. I get it. During my most, the height of my most desire to unalive, I was also doing the most with my life. Socializing the most, having sex the most, doing the most. I get it. You got nothing to lose. You have watched this channel and you've watched my journey in life through exploring modern society, either through explorative analytical videos or personal ones about myself. You will know that. I this is why introspection is so hard. And this is why learning the lesson is so difficult. Holy fuck. I have been celibate for years going on. This is like the seventh year that I was celibate. Whoa. And I had been struggling with being, uh, as it's labeled, a femme soul. Long story short, women didn't want to date me, let alone have sex with me for the whole year that I had been exclusively dating women. And well, especially, well, obviously, inevitably now at this point, I had tried my best to be very optimistic about it. And of course, I am a very strong believer that absolutely nobody owes you sex. Nobody owes you a relationship. Nobody owes you love or anything like that. I hold no resentment toward women woman or toward lesbians or anything like that it is just what it is that is just how life is and we need to go on and move on and no no no. hold on i don't know if she had sex with him but i'm kind of hoping she said she had sex with somebody else because if she had sex with him oh girl i mean i get it the lesson is hard to learn but also, oh girl, not blame a whole demographic of we people, were in it. even individuals for our own personal problems and a lot of our own insecurities that we have. I'm a very, very strong believer in that. So I don't say that with any like resentment toward any woman that I've dated, any woman who I've been attracted to or any woman who I've told my feelings to and they have not reciprocated it. You are entirely valid in your feelings and everything. And I have never... Connor says, is it the brain's last try to make a connection with anyone? Yeah, I think so. I think it's the brain's last chance to say like, give me a reason not to do it. And maybe an orgasm will be the reason not to do it. Not him, but the feeling, you know, the feeling. 
ever breached when a woman has said that she just wants to be friends with me. I have never contacted them after that and I would never dream of doing such a thing. Boundaries are so important and valuing yourself is so important. So yes, no, I'm not saying this with any animosity is what I'm trying to say here. So anyway, I decided that I wanted to have sex one last time. Woman, it, that was not going to happen. I knew that at this point. And so I had to narrow my sights down to not just men, but my male friends within my vicinity. I am not at all condoning my actions here. I'm not at all condoning what I did. I'm not at all condoning my mental state here. And I'm most definitely not even using that as an excuse here. I'm just relaying what happened, what transpired. I suggested to this particular male friend of Oh, wait. Of mine at the time that we play a poker game. And Oh, so not Lachlan, a different man. I decided to suggest whilst we were playing that we make things a little bit more interesting, a little more higher and more fruity stakes. I needn't elaborate on what I suggested, but obviously I won. I didn't think it was gonna be a good experience and I most definitely didn't think that it was gonna be anything different from all my really horrible, rough, and in some cases violent experiences that I had had before being involuntarily celibate with both men and with women before that point in my life. I thought it was just going to be like every single other experience that I'd had before my involuntary celibacy, but I wanted to do it one last time because this had been such a crucial part Okay. of me this being celibate and also just being sexual and especially coming to a point wait i'm kind of like okay wait i'm relieved now she didn't have right she didn't have sex with him she had sex with somebody else that's good right in the last year why, why not of coming to terms with who i thought i was with my sexuality and ultimately being disappointed she said i'm going through it a lot right now but obviously in therapy shout out to therapy and how it had all been going and not finding sort of the awakening and sort of warm embrace of my sexuality <laughs> within myself that i had really hoped for and thought would be the case and really just finding myself being even more lonely than i had previously been knowing more about myself actually made me feel even worse about myself yeah. and that was quite scary to live knowing about yourself deeply makes you feel the worst and then you come up again hitting your true 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 rock bottom that's it that's why i want to wait to see what sneeko's rock bottom is going to be because he hasn't hit it yet with and that was quite scary to accept of myself now what blew my mind about this experience excuse the pardon was how it actually was the best experience I'd had. And to be fair, I, I mean, I don't have many experiences to compare it to, and I'm not for that comparative sort of mumbo jumbo about these sorts of things, but it was a really, really positive experience. And this experience was actually so good to me and for me, in fact, that I ended up spilling my whole heart out to this person and actually saying everything that I had been planning out to somebody made me realize like what I was- Okay, so she did not have sex with Lachlan. Okay, good. So she's, she's fine. She's allowed to have consensual sex with a man or whoever. Like, lesbian or not, I don't give a fuck. Like, gay people have sex with women all the time. Gay men, gay... Gay men have sex with women. Lesbians have sex with men. It is not that weird, okay? Everybody thinks it's weird. Has never seen a straight man take it up the ass. Anyways, the point is, is like, I'm, I'm here to support her. I'm glad it's not Lachlan. That makes me feel so much better was actually going through and like my mind and how it was really <sighs> uh, how unstable I really was during this whole time and how I'd been keeping it all bottled up inside of me and was just tormenting myself incessantly to the point of near insanity she said it was a male friend but she didn't say Lachlan so she said one of my male friends which indicates it's not Lachlan right and he really helped me through it especially during this whole experience that uh-uh it doesn't make you buy worm uh-uh you're too close-minded for this conversation you gotta be 10 percent more open-minded if only having sex with somebody told you your orientation. If who you have sex with tells you your orientation, then gay men wouldn't be in the closet in straight relationships. If gay men can have sex with their wives for 30 years and come out as gay eventually, then it's not who you have sex with. We're having and ooh -ha, I'm no longer a film star. So that important context is out of the way. And now let's go back to the last Zoom supper. At this last Zoom supper, as I said. Okay, shout out to Z. Shout out to Z for not having sex with Lachlan. We'd love to see it. Okay. She had sex with a consensual male friend that was not Lachlan. That's all I care about. Awesome. Lachlan and I were both in a better place, I thought, in our friendship. And we were excited, I would say, uh, to go on holiday. I was not as excited, definitely, because now I actually... Cognitive says, unless you think gay or straight are actions, gay and straight aren't actions. They're literally quite the opposite of not actions. So I don't know who thinks that, but it's absolutely incorrect with all of the data we have. So pop the bubble, guys. You realize that this was actually going to happen and... <sighs> 
it was starting to dawn on me how peculiar this whole situation was that I had inadvertently put myself into by not having the spoons nor the time nor mm -hmm. the mental mm -hmm. time and energy to cope with it. And so spoon emoji in chat guys. I thought that Lachlan could handle this and I thought it was very very important to tell Lachlan all of this. The uh -oh. first time in our whole friendship I actually decided to do all of the answering without being asked any questions. So I told Lachlan everything that he very much needed to know. That I had been in a really bad place. I told him everything that I had been going through mentally and what I had planned on doing. I told him that at that time I had met somebody and had gotten romantically connected with them since then and that if I was going to go on holiday with him that nothing romantic could possibly possibly happen between us. And I was quite sure that this was okay and that this was going to be received well just based on everything that we'd spoken about. Okay, hold on. I'm so on the edge of my seat, but Connor made a great point. Says this is why in medicine it's called men who have sex with men, not gay men. Exactly. Exactly. If we want to be the most accurate with how we describe people's experiences, who you have sex with does not indicate an orientation. It indicates an action. It tells you an action, not an orientation with regards to him and his life for the previous hour. I wonder if she felt an intuition to tell him to kind of see how he reacted because honestly, your friends are not, your friends aren't owed this information, you know, all of that stuff. So, but I wonder if something in her body told her or in her subconscious said like, tell him to see how he reacts. You know what I mean? Does that kind of make sense? of this zoom call he seemed to be moving on he was seeing other people everything oh, was going okay so she was trying to have a deeper friendship with him but he couldn't handle it because he hadn't moved on well for him i thought now after i told lachlan this i can honestly say that these were probably some of the most bizarre most inappropriate most mind exploding moments and hours of my life very revelatory about what i really thought was a friendship of sort of mutual respect and no 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 no. cognitive this is a great teaching moment you said doesn't seem like a good idea to say i rejected you because i'm a lesbian but i just slept with a man now i'm going on holiday with you but i won't sleep with you well it's because he didn't he she's not into him it doesn't matter if she's willing to sleep with a hundred men if she's a lesbian or not she doesn't want to sleep with this one man sleeping with men does not mean she has to sleep with lachlan so if he takes it as a threat to him, that's why I say he's like a horrible person. Because only a horrible person would feel entitled to sex because she has sex with men. But you have sex with men. Why can't you have sex with me? It's not always about you, bitch. The fact that the man might feel entitled to sex with Z because she has sex with another man is why he's an asshole. The entitlement is the assholery. This is the red flag. To say, well, you had sex with him, why not with me? because those are two different people. It's not about you being a man, you know? And I agree with you. Okay, you said, I never said she did. I said, it's not a good idea. Well, it's not a good idea because the man might be crazy. That's why it's not a good idea. It's not, it's only not a good idea because the man might be crazy. That's why it's not a good idea mutual understanding and it was really quite heartbreaking to experience this in real time i agree with bobby though i don't know how she thinks he could take it well you know there's always that hope that like oh we're friends now so we can tell each other things this is why i say and i know you guys like i say these things for a reason just because we're best friends doesn't mean you know you need to know everything about me if my own mother won't take everything I have to tell her very, like, with, you know, grace because it's, oh, my God, like, it's hard for her to process. You think my best friends can do the same thing? There are just things you can't tell everybody because they don't know how to process it. And so you kind of, like, tell people you feel safe with to tell them. Even my closest, most, I love them so much. Of course, they're not always safe to tell things to because they just don't know how to process it. That's not bad. It's just bad if they lash out on you because they can't process. That's the bad thing. The bad thing isn't that you can't process it. The bad thing is that you punish me for your inability to not process it. This is not my fault. It is no one's fault. It's not your fault either. But you can't lash out on people because you don't understand. And I agree with you guys. She shouldn't have told him anything. But I also think she shouldn't have even been in this situation in the first place. But here we are. We're learning the life lesson. So let's see experience the end of a friendship in real time it was also revelatory. yes k says shazee was coping about the friendship and he was coping about the relationship possibility true 
Tory that this was not in any way perceived as a friendship by Lachlan, that this was purely seen as an opportunity to prove himself as being my hero, as he called it at this point in time. Lachlan's response to me telling him that I was and that I very fortuitously had a friend who was there to help me through it. That I had this friend to unknowingly help me, not just with my celibacy, but also to help me with this that I had been carrying for months at this point. Was, and I say this verbatim, because these words will forever be branded onto my frontal lobe. But I wanted to be the one to save you. I wanted to be the one to show you what real passion was. I cannot believe my eyes. I couldn't believe my ears. And this was ultimately three hours of him having these very <sighs> peculiar sort of panic attacks, sort of putting his head down, just us not talking for good stretches of 10 minutes at one point, just not talking, just him looking melancholy. I was sitting there just sort of, I didn't know what to do. I was, uh, I had tears welling up in my eyes because I sort of, I did realize that this was the end. And <laughs> what would we do without all the men? All these lesbians denying men their pussy. What do we do without all the men? They built America, even though I'm from Canada. <laughs> what are we going to do without the Lachlans? <laughs> it was definitely not the end that I wanted. Girl. And I could see a lot more clearly the very toxic, very unhealthy situation <sighs> that I had most definitely contributed to getting us into. And sporadically during these sort of panic attacks and these ums and ahs and huffing and puffings and like expulsion of breath very dramatically, he said some very interesting things. Like for instance, he said that if we held hands on holiday, would this now be a problem now that I was sleeping with somebody? And I thought, what? Wait, I'm sorry, what? Hold hands? Hold hands? When, when would I ever want to hold? When would I ever want to hold hands? <laughs> so after this, and after the melodramatics, as I like to call them, because this was all very melodramatic, he sends me a message telling me not to contact him for two weeks. He just needs time to go over and to process all Ma'am? Connor says, I was so Yeah, but like, what about my dick though? <laughs> what about my dick though? Who's gonna suck and fuck me, bro? I'm gonna get demonetized, bro. Like the stream. Hold on, he says, morning, it's gonna take me a while before I'm ready to think coherently about all of this for now. We can keep the blank in our respective diaries and I will get back in touch when I feel like I can. Would appreciate it if you would please not contact me until that time. What a little fuck narcissist, bro. I do want to work through this and be friends, but for the next two weeks, I need to focus on myself and get a proper structure in place for blank. I can't do that if I'm thinking about this situation. What situation? And I can't allow the brief spark of progress I've made recently to be snuffed out. That's why I'm asking for the short period of no contact. I hope you understand. Please just let me know what you've that you've seen and acknowledge this. And then I look forward to seeing you at the end of the month with some things to tell you that will make you pleased for me. What? With some things to tell you that will make you pleased for me. X. Bro. Bro, I, I need you guys to know that if anyone in the past has ever written me messages like this, all of my siblings and I have read them over together and laughed while eating popcorn. I'm so sorry you're so f***ed up, but how dare you make it my problem? How could somebody make something so much about them? Like, look, I don't have the empathy right now. He's too much of a consent violator. If he didn't break her consent time and time and time again, maybe I'd have some level of empathy or some experience. I can't. I can't, you've f***ed up too many times. This, I hope y'all are having your bubbles popped right now. I hope somebody in my audience is 19 years old and being like, holy f I hope we just saved you. I hope Z's video just saved you 10 years of fucking drama in your life. I hope you now know how to sniff a loser like this out, bro. Oh my God. Made it says, yeah, nope. He's insufferable. Mr. Collins vibes from Pride and Prejudice. Bro, Mr. Collins plus Wickham vibes, bro. This is... This is Wickham plus Mr. Collins, bro. This is like if they had a baby, the narcissist and the loser who won't get the hint. Kinder says, so glad Z is spilling this to us online so I know Lachlan is seeing it. You know Lachlan is seeing it right now, girl. Information, because he really wants us to go on holiday, but that I must not contact him for two weeks and he will contact me when he is ready. So of course, unlike him, I respect that boundary. I just respond with a thumbs up to his messages and that is that. But That's true. Worm says way worse than Collins. Way worse than Collins. Wickham though, 
But with like Colin's energy, I can see it, but mm. Obviously, he phones me the very next day. Now oh. I was in a supermarket. What? Yo, don't call me, bro. Don't call me, bro. I don't want to talk to you, bitch. Yo, bitch, why you not hit me up, bitch? What? Sir. Sir. He doesn't... Brother, he doesn't have boundaries, brother. See? See how it's boundaries? This man don't have boundaries for himself. Can you please not contact me for two weeks? Boundaries, bitch. Yo. Yo, that's wild. Doing my weekly shop when I got this phone call, I never answered my phone, but seeing who it was, I thought, man, this has got to be good. So I answered. And so as soon as I answer, he immediately starts asking me very prying questions into my sex life, nah, I guess girl. you could call it. He nah. starts saying that he has to come to terms with accepting that his paranoia that I was sleeping around was actually true. And that this is something that he has to get over, but he has to accept that he was right about this Ooh, I'm such a dramatic bitch. Just... what did you say what did you say What did you say? Girl, this is the craziest. This is more intense than Brooke. This is bigger than Brooke, bro. This is bigger than Brooke. This, this is, this is more, this is a bigger deal than Australian accent, except for the fact that he said his mom died. That was pretty intense. Holy shit, bro. What are you even talking about? I just really got, I really got a face. Hey, look, bruv. Hey, look, bruv. Look, Z. Here, bruv. Look, bruv. In it. Bruv, I was really falling for you, even though, right, bruv, um, you're lesbian, bruv, but listen, bruv, since you took a dick, okay, bruv, I thought it was gonna be my dick, bruv, but since it wasn't my dick, bruv, I feel betrayed, bruv, <laughs> like, what? <laughs> okay, I'm building up a sweat, I'm building up a gay sweat, oh my god. And he then asked me an absolute banger of a question, if you ask me. This is a question that I have never been asked in my life. I honestly felt like I was in a movie at this point. And honestly, reflecting on this whole story, it really does sound like... Who are you in the story? Who are you in the story? Girl, messy, messy, messy. Like a film. And I think that that's very intentional, just based on the kind of, I think, person that Lachlan and that uh, especially men like Lachlan perceive themselves as being sort of very much characters in this sort of odd... Literally, Alien says sleeping around like she's cheating in a non-existent relationship. That's... Bro, I, I can't believe, bruv. Bruv, I can't believe you were seeing other people, bruv. I can't believe you were sleeping around on me, bruv. You're so fucking stupid, bro. Cognitive. I swear to God, cognitive. Get your shit together. Stop acting like he's innocent. Can't you see he's a manipulator? Cognitive, the fact that you're still stuck in this guy's dick two hours into the stream is insane, bro. How are you still stuck in this guy's dick? Bro, he literally, bro, how could you even still try to meet him where he's at? Because you're Z. Ah, oh, cognitive is Z, bro. You literally are the girl. You're the girl who falls for the bullshit. Bro, get your shit together, bro. Obviously, he's not the good guy who's figuring it out. He's the asshole who refuses to acknowledge anyone else's experience except his. He's the asshole, Cognitive. Stop identifying with him. God. Oh, my God. Go to therapy, bro. The sea of their life. Everybody else is simply a character. Of course not. Go to therapy and take this stream with you and be like, why don't I agree with Britney, bruv? Because, bruv, uh, he's obviously the bad guy as important and most importantly not having autonomy beyond that of what the Lachlans of the world write them as and it is most telling reflecting on this how everything transpired and especially in reflecting on this as I said banger of a question he asked me whilst I was deciding whether to get protein packed eggs or regular eggs who was more important to me him or lover boy hold up wait. hold up Oprah hold up Oprah Minute. you know when somebody no cognitive you're not you're saying, I'm not identifying with him. I'm explaining how he probably feels. No, you're not. You're f***ing wrong. You're f***ing wrong. This is not how he feels. This is how a different person would feel. 
and you're confusing the categorization. He is not feeling this way. He is having a cognitive dissonance relationship that is rooted in incomplete like mental health degeneracy. He is not feeling, he's not having an authentic feeling experience. He's having an entitled feeling experience, which could be authentic in a sense that it's real, but he is not having, okay, he is not having the real experience of like, oh my gosh, like I didn't realize like you were dating. This is different. He broke her consent multiple times. He's not having that. Guys, just because you were trained as a grapist doesn't make you less of a grapist, okay? Like his intentions are that he's allowed to feel entitled to Z. For him to say, like for him to even put her in this position now means he's insane, bro. Like, I don't understand how you're not understanding it. Like how you're not understanding. He's not the nice guy who made a mistake, who was like confused. Hayda says he may be rationalizing it that way, cognitive, but that's an illusion. Exactly. It's an illusion. And you're falling for the illusion for some reason. There are people who have a real experience that isn't an illusion that is this situation. It's not Lachlan. Lachlan isn't having the real experience. He's having the illusion of the real experience. These are very different things. And you know what? As a girl, as a girl, we have to go through our life trying to decipher, am I dealing with a guy who's having the illusion of the experience or a guy who's having the real experience? Because the guy who's having a real experience, I want to help. The guy who's having the illusion of the experience is dangerous. And then we have to go through life being a bitch and rejecting both. And then all of a sudden men are like, we can never be vulnerable with women. Yeah, because I can't fucking tell the difference between the guy who's having the illusion and the guy who's not. Now, obviously, you learn the difference over time. You learn because he violates the consent multiple times. Good people going through something aren't also consent violators because they're going through something. It could happen to some extent. You know, you could have that moment. But the illusion is what we're trying to decipher. We're trying to decipher the illusion. It's like that Australian guy that told Brooke my, my mom died. And then he was dating Brooke and Brooke thought his literal biological mom died. It ended up being the woman who raised him, not his literal mom. Don't you see how that's fucked up? You can't tell someone my mom died. Have her think it's literally your mother. Have her find out your mother's alive. And it wasn't your mother that died. It was someone you knew. And you can't say I was, I'm Australian when you lived in Australia for a short time as a kid. That's not, don't you see that that's the illusion? The illusion is like, the illusion is saying, oh, he's Australian. He's not Australian. He lived in Australia for a little while as a kid. That doesn't make him Australian, okay? The insinuation of he's Australian means different things, okay? Okay? Cognitive, you're not being very nuanced. We're not just diving into the female side. Don't identify this man as a male side. He's not having a male experience. He's having, well, he's having an unhealthy male experience. That's not our job. He's not having a healthy male experience. He's having a very unhealthy male experience, which is taught to him through an entitled like world that tells him he's entitled to women's bodies and women's hearts. This is not like, if you want to be nuanced, the nuances, he's the, he's the bad guy. This is about healthy, unhealthy. Exactly. Maiden said, I don't think this is male versus female. It's about uh, one's unhealthy limerence be becoming another ill-prepared uh, one's problem. Exactly. This is not about him being a man. Though I think him being raised as a man probably played a, a, a mind, right? Okay. This, this is bad. Okay. Sarah says, literally, Britt, would you mind reframing it as if the woman was being creepy to gay men because it's still not okay? Yeah, it's still not okay no matter what. It doesn't matter if it's gay, straight, man, woman. If somebody says no and you keep pushing, that's inappropriate. That also includes your parents. Hey, I don't know if you know this, but if you come out gay and your parents are anti-gay and then they feel entitled to knowing what's going on in your life, even though you don't have a relationship, that's about that. No, feeling entitled to people's privacy is inappropriate. And the fact that you don't know that is so weird. It's the entitlement that we're, we're saying no to. You are not entitled to people's intimacy. You're not entitled to your kid's lifestyle or relationships. You're not entitled to your best friend's like it comings and goings. You're not entitled. The fact that you think you're entitled is the problem. The fact that you're even trying to empathize with someone who's entitled is great, except we're not doing that right now. Right now, we're empathizing with the victim. Because right now, this stream is not about the predator. 
Okay, there is one victim in this story that I want to pay attention to, and it's Kid. I'm sure Lachlan has his own story about victimhood, but right now in this story, he's the predator. So we are not empathizing with the predator this season, okay, of live Britney streams. Okay, maybe next season we will. And this season, oh, actually we won't because I said in 2024, fuck male predators. I'm not sympathizing with you this year. I'm sorry, I already tried my best. You guys are lost. Go to therapy. I'm only empathizing with victims this year and kid z is the victim in this story so we are focusing on her girls okay to your question that they already know the answer to but they either don't want to accept the answer or they either just want you to say it in order to have their theatrical moment mind you and just let's remember with all of this i have only known lachlan for a maximum of about six months i have only met him in the flesh on two occasions for no more than 10 hours in total i haven't seen him since the end of last year this is honestly a no-brainer in my opinion. So whilst he's digesting what I have just told him with a lot of very melodramatic sighs, you know, and a lot of prying questions continue, of course, I tell him that I am not going on holiday with him, that this is not happening because of just everything that has transpired because it is clear to me that even though he has said that I didn't have to worry about his romantic feelings, that he was getting over his romantic feelings, that he was in a better place in his life, that this clearly was not the case, that this was clearly not something that he was ready to handle or deal with. It was very clear to me now and very apparent that his intention for our holiday were very nefarious. I can honestly say that at this point, I would have felt very unsafe being on holiday with him. I would have felt just with things that he personally told me about himself, about his feelings and everything, that I was not going to feel comfortable, that I would not feel that I could even close my eyes around him. And I did not see that as in any way meeting the requirements of a holiday. And of course, as I said, this whole situation was just so inherently and entirely highly toxic and unhealthy. It was not going to work. This is the perfect example of a male-female friendship that can never work when one person is attracted to the other person. And especially, especially in this- But this isn't about gender. I would go so far as to say this has nothing to do with gender, but it has to do with the entitlement that the genders were raised with. But also it doesn't have to do with gender. It has to do with bad versus good behavior, healthy versus unhealthy. I would even go further and say, this is the type you, of friendship you can't have with anyone, even if it's platonic. I've had, I've had not this happen in platonic relationships, but I've had like, even in platonic relationships with people, people feel entitled to me. Entitled to my time, my intimacy, my inner thoughts. And I'm like, whoa. And those are platonic. Those are pl totally platonic relationships. I'm like, what are you doing? It's not about, actually, Robert Sapolsky talks about this. It's entitlement. It is about entitlement. And that's the problem. Okay? The problem isn't about anything else. You want to make a safe space for people? Make a safe space for people to identify however they want and still adventure. I don't give a fuck if you're a lesbian and you have sex with men. I don't give a fuck. Okay? I don't give a fuck if you're a boy and you wear dresses. I don't give a fuck how you identify. What I give a fuck about is your relationship with that identity and if we can communicate in a way that makes sense to us. I don't give a fuck. If you're a white man or a man in general, I don't actually give a fuck. What I give a, a fuck about is your bad behavior and your entitlement. And that entitlement could be environment-based, genetic-based, or just you. You, you special little snowflake might be the one entitled bad guy I got to look out for. And you happen to be a man or a woman or a non-binary person. It doesn't matter. What matters is that this is about entitlement. And entitled people are the worst. They're just the worst kinds of people. Boogies entitled right? He's entitled to your sympathy. He's entitled to your patience. He's entitled to you listening to him. No, he's entitled and it's disgusting. Okay. Entitlement is the worst thing in a person. And that is all Lachlan is. I'm not saying he's not savable. I'm not saying he can't be better. I'm saying go to a therapist because I'm not here to make you better. I'm not here to empathize with you. I'm not here for none of that. Okay. This is a gay woman's year. I don't know if you guys got the memo. The theys, the, the queers, the fairies, the very secure straight men that aren't threatened by trans people, that's who we're here for this year. Okay? Period. <clears throat> Violet says the issue, some of us have, have it that even an entitled person would be upset being told they doesn't want to be with you because they're gay and later telling you about them sleeping with a man. Well, no, because first of all, Lock, no, because Kidology didn't say, I don't want to be with you because I'm a lesbian. She said, I don't see a future with you, which is true. She also, I don't know if you guys were fucking listening, didn't see a future with the guy she had 
a one night stand with or a friendship with. I don't know if you guys were listening, but Z did not reject Lachlan because she was a lesbian alone. I don't see a future with you. That's what it was about. She didn't want Lachlan. I don't see a future with you as a sexual partner. I don't see a future with you as a romantic partner. I don't see a sexual relationship with you in the future. That is her right. Just because she said, I'm pretty sure I'm a lesbian. I've only dated a lesbian. Doesn't matter. I don't give a She doesn't want to be with Lachlan, specifically the consciousness. And if he can't understand that, tell him to go kick fucking rocks. If you don't understand that people don't want to be with you because they don't want to be with you, okay, go kick rocks, period. And if people in the past have used that as a reason to not be with you, move the fuck on. I don't give a fuck what reason they gave you. They don't want to sleep with you. Who cares why? Who cares why they don't want to sleep with you? Bro, if they don't want to sleep with you, they don't want to sleep with you. I don't give a fuck if they say, well, I didn't sleep with you because you have straight hair and I like curly hair. I don't give a fuck what the reason is. They don't want to sleep with you. Who gives a fuck? why and the fact that y'all need closure go to therapy people saying people even needing a reason is so fucked up you know what's so anti-consent you know what's so anti-consent is the fact that people have to give you a reason why they don't want to sleep with you how about i just don't want to i just don't want to sleep with you is that okay bitch that's all i should have to say the fact that you even have the entitlement to say why don't you want to sleep with me though None of your goddamn business. The fact that we even have to justify why we don't want to pursue relationships or friendships with people, the fact that we even have to sit here and feel guilty and answer the question, none of your goddamn business, okay? None of your goddamn business, okay? None of it, okay? No. Fuck you, bro. Fuck you and your mom, okay? I'm so sick of people needing, no. You know what BDSM taught me? No is a complete sentence. No. That's what I learned in the dungeon. No. And it wasn't offensive and it was allowed. You did not have to explain why you didn't want to play with people. I am not obligated to answer it. No. That's it. No. It's neutral. I'm not rejecting you for any. No. I just don't want to. And I don't have to explain myself. Period. Period this case is not willing to get over those feelings or not making the effort to get over those feelings and to most significantly come to terms with the fact that the other person does not reciprocate their feelings and never will. This holiday wasn't friends going on a holiday together to just enjoy each other's company. This holiday was clearly very important to this story or this odyssey of his life that he was writing for himself of which I was a character that he was going to save and rescue and probably I don't know have passionate love with and I realized that he's actually the individual of my desire everything that I had said, everything I had related to him was just feeding into this whole narrative. It was becoming very apparent to me now. My saying that I wasn't going to go on holiday with him resulted in him giving me an ultimatum. And the ultimatum was that either I go on holiday with him or our friendship is over and that he will never speak to me again. Now, if a friend ever does this to you, just know that they are never your friend. If your friend has said, bitch, you're going on holiday with me, otherwise we are no longer friends and they mean it, that's not a friendship. I told him that I was not going on holiday with him, but that instead of very emotionally putting forward this ultimatum we should still try and see if we can be friends that he should take as long as he needs whether it be a month two months a year even even more than that i really didn't care i didn't give a date or anything i said he needs to take his time to really just figure things out with himself and with his life and mm. that then when he's ready if he's ready he can get in contact with me and see where we stand if we can still be friends and i can't believe i did that i can't believe i did that because that really was not at all what i should have done i should have called it quits there completely that was my opportunity i didn't take it I messed up. Oh well. Fortunately for him, he was able to then have his moment. And this was a moment that I saw as ultimately just that. A moment. A moment in a screenplay. A moment in a very melodramatic, very heartbreaking story of lost love. The tale par excellence of unrequited love. At this point, it is with a heavy heart that I announce that Lachlan ended our friendship for- <laughs> All by myself Just wanna be all by myself all the time fuck you Lachlan Good. cue the violence it's been interesting knowing you and I'm sorry it ended like this there is no point trying to be friends because ultimately I can only see you as a friend under certain conditions you saying outright that lover boy is more important sealed it so when you're not with another man you're s wait wait she's he said there's no point in trying to be friends because ultimately I can only see you as a friend under certain conditions okay grapey when you're not with another man you saying outright that blank is more important sealed it. Sorry that I can't see things from your side. The strength of my feelings 
to you was too strong. I'm surprised you didn't realize the depth of it, considering it perfectly clear in the messages I sent at the start of the year, in which you strongly implied that you re re reciprocated those feelings. I'm being fucking, I'm being fucking gaslit. I'm being, I'm literally being fucking gaslit. Sorry that I can't see things from your side. The strength of my feelings to you was too strong. I'm surprised you didn't realize the depth of it, considering it's perfectly clear in the messages I sent all the start of the year, in which you at least strongly implied that you reciprocated those feelings. The rewriting of history is so beautiful. The paranoia that I had in that you were sleeping with one of your housemates, that I rationalized as paranoia, and which ended up being true, was all too much of a nasty shock that I am not strong enough to get over. Forget me now. It can't just be me. This is so melodramatic. <laughs> Bro. Forget me now and focus on the relationship you need and want. I would have messed things up further down the line anyway, and it would have been more painful. I won't say any more. I am sorry. Again. Two hours later. If you could pay me back the sh- Yo. If you can pay me, if you can pay that as soon as you're able, please, so I can just bury this deep and move on. What? Stay off the holiday as soon as you're able, please, so we can just bury this deep. I can be petty, but I paid him his 235 euro. Deep and move on. And that, brethren, is a story of male-female friendship, as it most definitely should never be. I hope that this is a lesson to you. It most definitely now, on reflection at least, is a lesson to me. I cannot believe... Oh. Yep, that's the end of that sentence. I cannot believe... <laughs> I honestly sit in my room all day, editing videos and writing scripts and going on Reddit to see what people are angry about. I cannot believe that. So yeah, like he literally ended the friendship because she slept with somebody that wasn't him. That's so fucked up. That I had a life's worth of a friendship with somebody in a matter of a few months. It sounds like the kinds of books that particular men write. We all know those men who now feature very prominently on Reddit on r Mimi says, do you think Kidology was using him in her own way? I think they were using each other, but in completely different ways, right? So like she was using him because he said he was available for friendship. And she's like, cool, I'm looking for friendship and maybe something else if we vibe. But they didn't vibe in that way. So she said, I'm available for friendship. Are you available? But I don't think she was using him like in a bad way. I think she was trying to build a connection with somebody and he was available so you could say that she was using him in that way, but I would say she was settling for him, which I do think settling is a form of use, as unless it's like consensual and understood, which she tried to do time and time again. I'm not interested in you. I don't want to be with you specifically. I would like to remain friends. Are you okay with friendship? Yes, I'm okay with friendship. Okay, great. And then boom, I'm not okay with friendship. I actually really love you. And she was like, oh, okay, well, um, I'm not like really into you that way. So can we stay friends? Sure, I'll work on my feelings for you. Okay. Oh, he's seeing other people. He's moved on. Cool. Kidology, going through her own stuff, self-harming, looking at an exit plan, all that stuff. Okay. She reaches out to a friend she can trust, a male friend, seeks out intimacy. Okay. Has some intimacy. Cool. Her right. Tells Lachlan, who's now her friend, who's seeing other people. Hey, I had some intimacy with somebody and it really changed my life and now I don't want to kill myself. And he's like, but what about my dick? But what about my dick? What about my dick? What about my dick? It loves lesbians. Values are really important, right? With all of this to say, everyone's journey is their own, but in a story, you gotta know who you are. And sometimes you're the bad guy. Sometimes you are the bad guy. It doesn't mean you're always the bad guy. It doesn't mean you're the bad guy forever. It doesn't mean you're the bad guy all the time, it, but you're always living a moment of time. We're all living just moments of time. And in this moment of time, Lachlan's being the bad guy. Now, Z is being the bad guy to herself. Z is being the villain to herself in the story. She is her own greatest enemy in the whole story. Even more than Lachlan, Z is the villain in her own story to herself, but not to, not to Lachlan. Z is not being a villain to Lachlan, but Lachlan is being a villain to Z. And honestly to himself by not being introspective enough. It just sounds so terrible. I was very annoyed with, as I like to call it, the melodramatics of that message. And I did write a very long, very detailed email with receipts, with quotations and references, dispelling everything that he said about his paranoia of me sleeping around with Yorkshire men, his paranoia of me having strong feelings for him and reciprocating his feelings. All of that, that was just... Look guys, I don't think like if you're a bad person, you're always a bad person. You can be a bad person yesterday and a good person today. But having an unhealthy relationship with somebody else against their consent is always bad. It doesn't mean you're a bad person, but it, it's bad. So you need to go to therapy. You need to figure out your philosophy. You need to understand why it's bad what you're doing. You're doing a bad thing. And if you keep doing it and justifying it, then you're a bad person. Then you can choose to stop being 
a bad person. And then once you stop being a bad person, you're no longer a bad person. But if you keep doing the things that make you a bad person, now you just are. Absolutely wild to me. I thought that was hilarious. Very entertaining, very interesting, but also really showed me an example of a relationship where somebody just cannot accept your autonomy and sees you as a character in the story of their life that is of their making and yep. of their writing. Yep. And you have to conform to the role of the person that they have written. Yes, this is so important. Know who you are in the story and make sure that person isn't writing you into their story inappropriately written you as. And I think, unfortunately, this is an example of a relationship that started from a parasociality and turned very much into limerence and no way into love. This is not romantic love. Romantic love accepts that a person is a flawed human being that you cannot control, that you cannot coerce, that you cannot manipulate or deceive even into being with you. And that was a very sad revelation. I have, as a result, become very distrusting of people. I am now constantly walking around with a jagged fence around me because I don't trust anybody anymore. And it is, it's sad. It is sad. No, I think it's, I think it's reasonable. Discernment is important. Discernment is important. Because even I, like I freak out all the time a bit about making more YouTube friends, but I'm still doing it. When a girl slides into my DMs and she's like, love your content, girl, let's collab. I'm like, girl, what's up? And then I get excited and I take the risk because I'm hoping, and even boys too, boys and girls and theys, when I'm hoping this will be a new connection and it might go badly. They might make a video about me. They might start drama, but it's worth the risk. It was worth the risk for Z and I to become online friends and to make content together. And I think it's a good decision. I don't regret my decision to connect with Z. And I don't want to lose opportunities to connect with more people like Z or any of the people that I do collabs with on the regular because I like them and I like opportunities. And even if I don't collab with people now that I used to, I still appreciate the connection I had with them. Because ultimately it made me a better person making these connections and learning from these mistakes. Sad. I do think I will get over it. I think it is just a response to this very sudden breaking up of a friendship that was happening at a very peculiar time in my life. And that was sort of a very big friendship, even if it wasn't the thing at the front of my mind. And I was just doing it because I sort of had to go through the motions of doing life every day whilst I was dealing with everything. It was a thing that was happening. And of course, based on everything that happened, at least once I felt a lot better and was doing a lot better mentally, it was definitely a very traumatic sort of experience to reflect upon and a very traumatic ending of things, a very yeah. sudden ending of things that I was not expecting. I hope you enjoyed this more personal video and mm. this sort of story time of sorts. Do let me know in the comment section if you would like more videos like this. Thank you so much. And I'm so sorry that you had to endure my very croaky, very great. raspy, very breathy voice. I am quite sick at the moment. Thank you so much. for. I loved this video. We're going to look at comments in a second. Uh, Liam, thank you for joining memberships. Love to see it. Also, cool, you asked a really important question. How do we overcome pathological people-pleasing? Honestly, I really think this is a therapy thing. So I think therapy is your mental health, right? It's your brain and it's your relationship to other people, okay? So it's not like your um, medical doctor brain stuff. It's not like brain scan brain stuff. Well, it can be, right? But it's relating to sort of how you process information. Then philosophy is what you believe and what you think about the world. So use those two things to create balance but I think if you're a pathological people pleaser, that's probably something therapy will help with. And then we can talk about the values around our desire to people please, which often comes from our desire to avoid conflict, to be helpful, to be useful to people. It can be positive or negative. We don't want to hurt people's feelings. So <clears throat> you, you, I really do recommend therapy for things like that because, I, I, you know, again, as somebody who went to therapy and it really did save her life. I also know that without philosophy, it wouldn't have gotten me anywhere. And so I know that I can't do therapy on my own. I needed to go to a professional to help guide me. And you've got to find the right professional, which is really difficult. I had to email over 70 different therapists before two got back to me and said, yeah, I think I can help you. One did, and it was the greatest experience of my life. And one did it, and it was a horrible experience. But hey, the girl who saved me, shout out to her, girl. Love her. So again, like... Ultimately, when we have a real pathological issue, when we have a real thing that's a learned behavior from our childhood or something like that, therapy is the answer. Because those people are trained, they have the education, they have the knowing. Now, how you seek out therapy can be different. There's all types of therapy in the world. And I think that's up to you and who you are as an individual, right? I don't know. And then on top of that, what you believe really matters. So Z, you'll notice, to use a combination of self-awareness, but also self-actualization, like Z was going through it. She was going through it and faced herself 
And now the question is, because if you've been following Z's journey the last couple of years, it has been quite a journey and we get to witness it, which is kind of amazing. Like you guys watch reality TV. I mean, me too. But you know what's even better than reality TV? YouTubers. Because they're really going through it. I had my life on the internet for so long. And I, you know, those videos are privated now because obviously there's people who aren't in my life anymore. It doesn't make sense to bother them or, you know, you know, create a havoc for them. Um, they wouldn't consent to being on my channel anyway. So I've like obviously removed that content. You know, Z might take this video down one day, but the point is, is for this moment in time, we get to witness it and we get to learn from it. And I really, I know my videos did the same thing for other people. And you know what? It's embarrassing to face yourself because, oh, the cringe. So let's look at these comments. Updates. If you'd like part two, Lachlan has been emailing me since the upload, even though I told him to never contact me again. Let me know. Apologies for the re-upload, but YouTube decided to spontaneously age restrict my video. If you know anything about when that happens, if it isn't good at all, it isn't good at all. If you know anything, so thank you for everyone who already watched the video and thank you for watching this video. I really appreciate it. See you next week. Okay, interesting. I mean, I'll take a part two, but only if it's safe because you don't want to like, you know, you know, you don't want to poke the beast a bit, you know? Oh, let's see. <laughs> oh, look, an hour long kidology special about my very specific childhood trauma. <laughs> yeah, I'm not surprised. This probably resonated with a lot of people. Yeah, people are really happy about it. It is not the flawed person you must accept. The world is flawed always forever. I feel like you have to accept that people are flawed. And that's really difficult because you always hope people will change. Well, maybe if I'm nice to him, he'll change. Maybe if I do this, he'll change. Well, maybe if I do this, he'll change. Uh-oh. Oh, my God. Lachlan's in the comments. Oh, yeah. He's crazy. He made a username called Lachlan. Oh, damn, girl. Lachlan here. Here's what I emailed in response for anyone interested. I have no problem with this video, video being uploaded. And I admit that I was an awful person throughout. The only thing I wouldn't have I would have appreciated is that some notice before it was posted, a certain close friend, family friend members I'd confided in instantly knew it was about me. And its uploading has caused some of them significant degree of stress at a difficult time, dealing with severe illness in the family. Punish and criticize me all you want. I deserve it, but my family friends don't. No, I call bullshit. I call bullshit. First of all, why would your family and friends even know? And second of all, I don't give a fuck what you're suffering with. Did you do this? Your family and friends should probably send you to therapy. And also, I feel like this is him manipulating. We, With a day's notice, I could have at least made sure they did not see it. I communicated this to Z in response. She teased a part two. So the factor is obviously not an importance. Fair enough. No, I don't think it's. Yeah, I don't think this is. Mm -mm. Anyways, names and details uh, excised. Yeah, no, this is this is like baby reindeer. Baby reindeer. You know, Pierce, he made a video about me. It wasn't even true, Pierce. Pierce, of course I never wanted to sleep with him, Pierce. Baby, I'm the stalker. Baby reindeer literally was not even named. And she came out and was like, it was me. I'm baby reindeer. Girl, none of us would have knew unless you said something. But also, even if we thought, you know, it's like, why are you coming out? And, and, and it's like the same thing, like, Everyone knows that's what stalkers do. Stalkers confirm they're the stalkers because they want to. He's confirming he's the guy when he didn't even have to. Now, he made up a name. This isn't a real YouTube channel, right? He made up a fake channel called Lachlan. You didn't have to do that. You could have just ignored the fucking video, bro, and told your family, oh, yeah, some shit on the internet, bro. What are you talking about this impacted your family? Impacted your family to know you're a, like rapist adjacent? I said what I said. Like it impacted your family to know like you're a, you're like you're a stalker basically. What are you talking about? What do you mean it impacted your family, bro? My XXX, my blank is still a viewer of your channel, so they let me know this morning that you'd made a video about what happened. I don't know whether you feel I have the right to respond or not. If not, then just delete this message. The only real point I want to make is this. I accept that I am selfish, spoiled, emotionally immature, and extremely inconsiderate, ugh, and that I hurt you horribly, saw you as some kind of vector to my story, then why are you writing this message, bro? Why are you writing this message? And not a full person in your own right, but I don't accept that I'm kind of, I'm a kind of sadistic, calculating person who uh, meticulously and intentionally designs interactions and experiences in order to cause pain to others. I was also in a very bad mental state over the whole period, drinking heavily, 
not getting out of bed some days and being self-destructive to the point of being in dangerous situations. I was not sitting here orchestrating and thinking ways of new ways to ruthlessly bend you to my will. It doesn't matter. She didn't paint him as Machiavellian. She painted him as entitled, which is different. I don't know that she even painted him as Machiavellian. She painted him as entitled, which I think is very different. She didn't use his real name for the record, Connor. Connor said in fairness, she shouldn't have used his real name. She didn't. She made up a fake name. He made a he made up a fake username to come comment to her. His name is not Lachlan. This is a fake name. She did not name him. So just FYI. Okay. She said, he said, sorry, Lachlan said, if you regard this whole message as just another piece of manipulation, then so be it. I do. Thank you for realizing it. Like I said, just delete and don't further read and don't read further. <laughs> girl. Don't take the tea away from me. Please don't think I'm under any impression that we can ever be friends again. I don't expect a response to any of this. And there's nothing I hope to achieve other than to provide clarity in a few points. You know, he reminds me, he reminds me of people in my life. Block. Firstly, I'm glad to hear that you're in a better mental place. Oh, this is so inappropriate to write on a public. Isn't that funny? This, this is posted here because he wanted us to see it. See how he's talking to Z but he wants us to see it. Why do we need to see this? I don't know who the fuck you are. I don't know who you are, bitch. Why do I need to see this? We know why. He needs that supply, bro. He needs that supply, bro. Okay. Okay, firstly, I'm glad you're in a better mental place. I'm happy to say that I am too. And I would like to, I would like you to know that I'm making gener gener genuine efforts to change, such as, oh my God, bro. I have not drunk alcohol since early June, barring three days near the end of June at a friend's stag weekend. N bitch, we do not care. I have made a social, I have made social connections with new people in which alcohol or potentially romantic situations do not feature X, X, blank, blank. I have started a job at a blank with the intention of trying to learn. Bro, I'm feeling this. I know this person, not literally, but I know exactly the person who is like this. They need, they, bro, Lachlan might be, Lachlan might be, he might be, if you're watching the screen right now, he might be a, you know, I made a social connections with fewer people in which alcohol or potentially romantic situations do not feature. I have started a job at the, oh, this is the, oh, I'm so stupid. This is the email he sent her. And then he put it here. Oh, that's even worse. This is the email he sent her. And then he put it here. <laughs> Yo, what a... F <laughs> Yo, this is a one, bro. I said it. This is a one or this is a severely mentally ill person and this person needs to be arrested. You're right. This is the email. And then he's sharing it in public like, ew, people are saying this is a very mature response. Hope you're doing okay. This is not a mature response. Guys, it is not okay to do this. This is not a mature response. This is not a, this is not a mature response. Okay. I started a job at blank with the intention of trying to learn from some, from, from people who do selfless work for the community. I'm gonna, I'm gonna end it all. All the groups we work with have some kind of social purpose, be it deaf, blind groups and mental health charities and children's clubs. Oh, we know what this is. It's a job where I can observably and measurably make some people's lives easier. I know exact, oh my God, I know this person. I am hoping that through doing more selfless actions and becoming a less selfless person, I obviously, it's obviously very early uh, days. Okay, you guys know who this is. No, 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 this is the bullshit. This is the bullshit person who says all the things that is supposed to sound good, but has none of the backings to it. This should not be here. And you know how I know they're lying? Because they posted this video. That's the problem. Posting this video here is the lie. This is him trying to make, because he's he writes beautifully. He's very convincing. Don't, this is what I've learned in my life. My gut is telling me this is bullshit. This is absolutely very much bullshit. Do not fall for this. I've told you above in an effort to show you that I was not an evil mastermind. I did not enjoy our friendship ending. I was not happy and pleased at what I had done. And I have not continued to move through the world intentionally hurting or manipulating people. I make stupid, selfish, despicable mistakes. Oh! Yo, Dr.
after disrespecting the DMs, bro? I made a mistake, bro. I made a mistake. Oh, Dr. Disrespect in the DMs made a mistake, bro. Oh, is that what you did, Lachlan? Oh, is this what you, is that what you did, bitch? He made a mistake. The latest in a line of many, motiva motivated by panic and insecurity. And I'm doing my best to never make it again. He made a mistake, bitch. My bad, girl. My bad. He broke her consent 72 times. It was a mistake. I'm so... Girl, why did... You know what? I heard Diddy made a lot of mistakes too. You know, Diddy is just full of mistakes himself. Him and Diddy and Boogie should hang out because him, Diddy, Dr. Disrespect, and him should hang out because they all about them mistakes, you know? You know, he should... He, they know all about mistakes, let me tell you. <sighs> In order to change, I need to accept what I am and resolve it uh, to be different and resolve to be different. But what I am not is a master manipulator with a cruel and sadistic streak who loves themselves and the sound of their own voice. I'm selfish and considerate and desperate, but I am I'm selfish and considerate and desperate, but I'm a mess. Yo, there are a few brief things I want to clear up. Tenish? I didn't go on and on about you in the third party. The first I heard of you was a recommendation from blank that put you onto a short list of potentially interesting people. I then pitched you to the third party and they were interested. I did not lie and manipulate you into meeting this, uh, into this meeting as a part of some overreaching plan. I did not brief blank on your whole story because I didn't know it myself at the time. The first we met, the sum total of what he knew was you were abandoned in South Africa at birth. You had to come to the UK short notice. You identified as a fem cell. You made videos about modern society, particularly on male female relationships, wokeness, and race politics. 1325. I guess this is our timestamps. Regarding the initial messages I sent you, yes, they were confusing, incoherent, and dishonest. I was lost in the stupid fantasy ideal that we were two lonely people who could somehow fix each other, which is incredibly selfish and desperate way to frame things. And I'm sorry. Oh, do you want to say you're sorry without also saying it's a mistake? Do you want to say that you're sorry without also saying it was a mistake? Because this wasn't a mistake. This was a decision. Okay? A mistake is doing it without knowledge. On purpose is doing it even though you know better. And he did it on purpose multiple times. So do you want to maybe re rewrite this without the, it was a mistake? Okay? Regarding the quote I gave you from your video, we'd been talking as friends for a little while, whilst by this point, the video I quoted was from a quite short and less serious than your others. As a friend, that was just me trying to show support and basically saying good job with the videos. They're enjoyable. I haven't watched all of your videos and that and one other one were the only two I've watched all the way through. He's talking about when she he quoted her cringe-like. I accept your overall point that I did not ask you about yourself enough and overall my disregard for your well-being, of your well-being and personhood at my expense, at the expense of my own gargantuan Oh, no, of my own was gargantuan. But I did ask you about books you've read and things you've seen. For example, blank and blank. The book you were reading on language slash meaning. Sorry, I forgot what it was called. I did, talk a, I did talk a lot in those conversations, but I do not and never have loved the sound of my own voice. Are you sure about that, bitch? Because I'm reading a random message from you right now. And it sounds for sure as hell like you think we all need to be reading this. I do not know why you think the internet needs to be reading this. See how he said that? I don't love the sound of my own voice, but I need the whole internet to read this. And now Brittany Simon is going to be reading my own words back to me and I'm going to be jerking it later. Sir, sir, get it together, sir. Get it together. Okay. Okay, hold on. Regarding the quote I gave you. Okay, I accept your overall point that I did not ask you about yourself. Okay, read the books. Okay, I did not. Okay, like, this, okay. I've hated it for most of my... <laughs> bro! Bro! Bro, bro, I've always hated the sound of my own voice, bro. Bro, I've literally always hated the sound of my own voice, bro. I hate so much. I'm gonna write a whole fucking email right now. I hate the sound of my own voice, bruv. I've always hated it. It's awful. I don't love the sound of my own voice. I've hated it for most of my life. But I enjoy talking with you because you are non-judgmental and attentive. Unfortunately, these good attributes of yours were things I increasingly took advantage of. 
I don't dispute that you turned into my therapist for me. I've used other friends this way too, and I've lost relationships along similar dynamics. I'm sorry. Wow. Okay, that was part one, bitch. Part. That was that was part one. Part two is just as fucking long. Part two is just as fucking long. bro. Somebody pay me, bro. Oh wait, this is my job. <laughs> like the stream bros. I love my job. Okay. I love humans. I love observing them. And you know why I'm being a bitch to this guy? Cause I know a fucking loser when I see one, bro. He's a fucking loser. He's a loser. And he's going to fucking break your consent the moment he's available to, because he did it to Z multiple times. He's a fucking loser, bro. Part two, Lachlan here. You can view that voice note as meticulously constructed piece of manipulation, but it was not. Perhaps whether or not it is or it was is not important as the outcome was the same, but I'm not lying when I say this. I believe that I felt that at the time I was not intentionally trying to manipulate or lie to you. I was full of emotions that were childish, idiotic, irrational, and selfish. All of these things motivated that message, but a cold, calculated, manipulative intent did not. Yo, it kind of feels better in my throat to talk like that. I'm not gonna lie. Oh my God, hold on, I gotta blow my nose. Okay, it kind of feels better in my voice to talk like that. But I won't, okay? I just feel like my normal voice is too manly for him. You know, because he's a bitch. You know, I just feel like my regular voice is just, it's not bitchy enough, you know? Okay. I don't dispute anything about how unhealthy and selfish it was to nurture those feelings for you and asking you repeatedly if you were sure was despicable, creepy, and desperate. I'm sorry. Regarding your question, would you be happy in an intimate relationship with somebody I'm not, not attracted to you? It was hard to fully remember what was going through my head, but it was something like, I thought you implied that you did not have feelings for me of some kind, but that, okay, hold on. I thought you implied that you did, oh, you did have feelings for me of some kind, but that the physical atten attraction side of those things was absent and impossible and that you were saying it, would, it won't be fulfilling for you, it would be painful for you. As if that was the only thing standing in the way, which was a very typically unselfish way for you to have framed it, to which I responded in an equally typically selfish way, I'm sorry. Mm, no, bitch, you gotta be dumb then. Then you're dumb. Like you're stupidly dumb, you know? I just, I can't, What is what is happening? Regarding your question, oh no, I said that. Okay, I was en enveloped in this unhealthy ideal of you, wanted to talk more often and put unfair pressure on you. I don't dispute this. A bit of unsaid in this video context was that I also was mentally unwell during this period, unable to sleep without drinking alcohol and barely speaking to anybody else. Again, this, is n this does not minimize the negative impact I had on you, but it serves to illustrate that I was a complete mess. I was not carefully and intentionally trying to manipulate or hurt you. So one of the things I learned in DBT, and personally, this is just like what helped me. It really saved my life in therapy was my therapist said, you know, you should go apologize to your parents. And I said, what? I said, you just told me I have borderline because of the household I was raised in. And she goes, yeah, but you still need to apologize to people you hurt even if they've hurt you. And I said, what? And it's true. My parents never intentionally hurt their kids. They never targeted or manipulated their children. My parents just did the best they thought they could. And they thought they were doing really, really good things for their kids. But as a gay kid growing up in that household, it wasn't good for me. Okay. And what she was trying to teach me was that even though people hurt me, it doesn't mean I get to hurt them back. And so you need to apologize without expecting anything in return. And so I went and I learned how to apologize to people for things I had done, regardless of why I had done them. Because it doesn't matter. I had hurt you. And that's not a justification. Hurting people because they hurt you is not a justification. Period. And I think that that's the thing that is so hard for people to realize. So what I'd like for Lachlan to realize is you need to learn to apologize without bringing up excuses for your bad behavior. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how much you're suffering, you don't get to hurt people. And I think that's the problem is like, you can explain it like, hey, just so you know, this is why I did it, but I'm sorry and I'm working on it and I won't do it again. And to prove it to you, I'm gonna actually change. And changing is difficult because you gotta actually do it. You gotta be put in front of temptation and never do it again. You have to be given the opportunity basically. 
it, you're not default a good person, guys. Goodness is a construct, but also how do you know you're a good person if you've never been tempted to be a bad one? And that's really difficult, right? How do you know? Lachlan's apologies aren't good enough because one, they're in public. They should, I shouldn't even be seeing this. The fact that it's posted here is so weird. That means he wrote it to Z in an email and then still thought the public needs to see it because he's not sorry for what he did to her. He's sorry she told us. He's sorry he was found out because if he was really sorry, he would have taken it as a responsible adult as something he did between them. And that's it. Z didn't tell us who he was. Z's allowed to tell us her story. And the fact that this is her story means like it was eventually going to be something she was allowed to tell. You can't hurt people and expect them not to tell. That's why the bridges burn because you expect to hurt people and not be told on. No, you cannot hurt people and expect people not to tell. Now, if they lie about you, that's unfair. But Lachlan's not proving she lied about him. And that's the problem. Lachlan's admitting he did everything she said. He's just trying to make excuses for it. I don't accept your excuses. You don't get to hurt people because they hurt you first. Or you don't get to hurt people because they hurt you last. You don't get to hurt, like, do you have values or not? Do you have values or not? And Lachlan doesn't have values. What he has is a really well-written email that's gonna convince people that he gets to do bad things because these people were mean to him. Nope. You don't. That's not how it works. You don't get to do bad things and expect people not to tell people. And at the same time, again, okay, if he, again, if she, sorry, if Z lied about him, then he should say that, but he's not even saying that. You know? Yes, Fish said it's Lachlan's world and we're just in it. Kay said, wait, 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 did I just realize, did he comment on the re-uploaded? Yep, this is the re-uploaded. So he emailed Z and then he posted it. And here we are. Okay, now, and hurt people hurt people, so just keep that in mind, guys. It's not a justification, it's an explanation. Hurt people hurt people. It's real, but it's not a justification, right? Okay. <clears throat> Bobby says his values are a mud dick. True. Okay, let's see. Um, okay. I was enveloped in this unhealthy ideal of you, wanted to talk to you more, put unfair pressure on you. I don't dispute this. A bit of unsaid in this video context was that I was also mentally unwell during this period, okay? Again, this does not minimize the negative effect I had on you, but it serves to illustrate that I was a complete mess. I was not carefully and intentionally trying to hurt or manipulate you. I agree with this, except if you break someone's consent over and over again, that's even worse. That means you didn't even have the intention like a predator, like <laughs> it was worse. You hurt them without even knowing and you still want a way out. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, yes, you didn't maliciously plan. You weren't like, oh, I'm going to ruin Z's life today. What's worse is Z told you this is what I would like. And you thought I'm going to push Z's boundaries. What's worse is that you push Z's boundaries, this is the worst kind of, kind of predator, non-predator. It's a predator who doesn't, it's a shark who bites you. And like, you're like, bro, like, again, I'm not mad at you for being a bear, bro. But that doesn't mean I'm not going to fucking cut your head off and put you on the wall. You feel me? Like, I'm not mad at you for being a bear. I'm mad at you for being mad at me for mad at you for being a bear. I'm not even mad at you, bro. I'm just going to like defend myself. Z's defending herself against a bear. And he's like, yo, I'm a bear though. And I'm like, yeah. Okay. We still get to defend ourselves against animals and humans are animals. So regardless of if you meant to or not, this shouldn't be here. If you never meant to hurt Z, this should have stayed between you and her. E and you should have understood why she posted the video and you should have been for it. You should have been like, yeah, I did that shit. My bad. Yeah, I did that shit and I shouldn't have. If it's all true, if she lied about you, that's different. But if it's all true, then you got to own up to it and you're not owning up to it. You are trying to explain it away, right? There's a huge difference. I'm open to the nuance, but but he's not actually for real understanding what he did. He doesn't believe anything he's writing down. None of He doesn't believe a word of this. He doesn't believe a word of this because he keeps bothering her. Let Z tell her story. Okay, if the only thing she got wrong is that you intentionally did it, then that doesn't change the fact that you broke her consent multiple times. So 
It doesn't, it doesn't matter why. None of this matters. Either you're sorry or you're not. None of the public needs to know this, right? Z gets to tell her story. So, okay. Let's see. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I understand how ridiculous the saga of me calling you repeatedly was when I thought something might have happened to you. Again, um, he thought something happened to her, guys. He was just reaching out because he cares even though that's inappropriate. Again, you can see it as intentionally manipulation. It was not. Kind of is though. The joke of hordes of Yorkshiremen was promoted by a jockey comment you made in an earlier, or jokey comment, sorry, you made in an earlier call about being a survival mode. See, the fact that he's even explaining all of this to us, like why do we need to know this? Because you lived in a house full of men. I obviously exhibited intense sexual paranoia later on. So maybe this joke was indeed unpinned by that. Underpinned. I don't know. At the time, I was embarrassed at having called you so many times while drunk. So I was actually trying to lighten things with a joke. Mm. I don't have any negative image of Yorkshireman. My two best friends on earth are from Manchester and Northern. Wow. Are you like, is this neurodivergency? Why are you explaining this? See, what is this? This has to be manipulation or deep trauma, which either way, right? The final phone call, those two days constitute the worst mistake mistake ding 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 mistake is not knowing your friend is vegan and feeding them cheese on purpose is when your friend is vegan and you feed them cheese now okay if you forget here i'll give you this is what he's doing this is what he's doing lachlan is saying okay i know that z is vegan and I fed her vegan or I fed her cheese pizza. And she's like, oh my God, I'm vegan, Lachlan. And he went, oh my God, I'm so sorry. And then five times after, every single time Lachlan made dinner for Z, he kept forgetting she was vegan and putting cheese in her pizza that was non-vegan. Or that was non-vegan. Okay, is Lachlan doing it on purpose? Is he manipulation? Like, if, is he being manipulative? Is he doing it because he's a narcissist? Or is he just super forgetful? no. At that point, if you keep forgetting Z is vegan and you keep, 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 keep putting cheese on her pizza when she told you, hey, hey, like, you know I'm vegan. Why do you keep, do- oh, I just keep forgetting. I'm just so forgetful. Um, At some point, it's not forgetful. At some point, it's malicious and intentional. Even if you're not sitting in your room thinking, I'm going to put cheese on the vegan's pizza. If you make pizza for your friend and you forget to pause and say, Z is vegan, don't put, don't put cheese on her pizza, that's fucked up. You're fucked up. It's not a mistake at that point. You're either deliberately getting amnesia right before or you're, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, no. Either way, you're fucked up. So, no. And a, a person who knows they're fucked up and is acknowledging it wouldn't have written this. How do you not understand? You can't keep calling it a mistake, bro. Okay, you can't. You can't keep calling it a mistake. So he says, the final phone call, those two days constitute the worst mistake I've ever made and yet made yet in terms of ruining a friendship. I was in a state of panic convincing myself of the story that was this story that this was me being rejected and humiliated yet again. Okay, well go to therapist as you as you rightly say and as I recognize in hindsight positioning myself as a character in the story but again at the same time I did not see this I was in an extremely negative state of having lost hope that any good would come of life it was despicable of me in that context to try and drag you down with me but you must know that the ending of your friendship was not something I did in a sense of glee enjoyment or satisfaction she knows she knows none of this changes anything that's what he doesn't get. Okay. So like, okay. Like none of that changes anything. It doesn't matter. She's not, she didn't paint you as Machiavellian. She didn't really paint him as Machiavellian. I don't know why he keeps hearing that, except he thinks it's about him. She's not even painting you as Machiavellian. You're painting yourself that way. You are right to laugh and play fake sad music over those final emails. They are indeed funny and pitiful. I don't know what else to say. I was so wrapped up in myself at the moment that I was drinking very rapid. I was drinking very rapidly. 
until I was eventually sick and made a half attempt to hurt myself. Oh, see, now he he's like boogie. Oh, sad story. Tiny violins. Even though I fucked you over, I was going to hurt myself. So see, I know exactly this kind of fucked up person, bro. Useless. He says, I don't say that this to elicit sympathy. Yes, bitch. Don't fucking lie to me, bitch. He says, but to try to demonstrate once again that I was not having a good fun time. I was not real, real, uh, relishing this moment or enjoying any fiber of it. She never fucking said you were. She never said you were. I'm sorry that I made it more difficult for you to trust people. Needless to say, the majority of people are not like me and you should not assume they are. I'm very glad to hear that you're in a good place mentally and generally. And for once, I've let myself be happy for myself that I am also trying to get better. Liar! You sit on a throne of lies. Liar! Now, I don't believe this bitch for a second. Let's see if there's an update. Okay, let's see. Is there an update? Is there an update? Part two, part one, eight replies. Damn, this is a pretty mature response. Not true. This is a very manipulative response. Fuck him. You should make a video black screen if you want. We don't need to see your face, but most people aren't going to read this. Well, I just did, bitch. You can watch my live stream. I'm not trying to present. He said, I'm not trying to. Oh, wait. I'm not trying to present a side to my mind. We have resolved this after she sent me a very long email two months ago, and I had agreed not to contact her again. For her to then post a video to potentially hundreds of thousands of people about me to any sane person, I think that entitles at least a right to respond. <coughs> to a sane person, they would have let it go. Baby reindeer over here. Baby reindeer, Pierce. Pierce, of course I didn't sleep with him, Pierce. Of course I wasn't attracted to him, Pierce. Pierce, I'm a sane and competent woman, Pierce. Of course I'm not obsessed with him, Pierce. Of course I might have sent him an email or two. Just one email, just one little email. How many messages did you send him? Just, just a couple. Yes, I called him baby reindeer. Yes, he was my baby reindeer. Bro, literally, bro, this is baby reindeer. You know what's so funny about baby reindeer coming out and calling herself the soccer? Other victims came out and was like, yo, she fucked me up too, bro. She fucked me up too. This guy got a trail. Kid is definitely not the first and there ain't no last. There's probably like three or four people in his life he's fucked over. He reminds me so much of a person I knew way, like I knew in my past. And there was never just one person. Let me tell you, there was many. Oh, trust me. Lachlan got 10, 20 victims, bro. Probably three or four, but up to 10. Ain't no way, son. Ain't no way. She told her story, made up a fake name. Made sure to hide details, even details of what their detail, like what books they were reading and like conversations and what locations. And like, for the most part, you know, look, I, w I don't know who this is. I still don't know who it is. I don't care who it is. It doesn't matter. I don't care who it is. The point is, is Z had an experience, which he validated. All I heard from that message is that Z told the story correctly. She did not make him out to be Machiavellian. She told it very accurately. I didn't get the intention. Again, I don't think we thought he was sitting there making notes of all the ways to fuck over Z. It's worse. He never thought about her because he was entitled. He, it's worse. It's not worse literally, but it is like just as bad. You didn't even think of her as a person. You objectified her to such a degree. You basically did. You treated her like an object. Cool. Right? Like, cool. Cool. Good job, buddy. You know? Maiden says the fact that he took the phrase, you like the sound of your own voice, literally made me wonder uh, about his autism. I do think neurodivergence attract neurodivergence. And there's always a chance he could be neurodivergent. But of course, neurodivergence isn't what makes you this way. But let me tell you, just like a lot of incels are autistic, it's not because autism makes you an incel. It's because autism gives you a framework to view the world in which with the certain amounts of information can lead you to very black and white thinking or borderlines. Borderline doesn't make you a bad person, right? But with the certain environment and your certain understanding of the world, you might do things that are un, 
uncouth, but being borderline doesn't make you a bad person, guys. Being autistic doesn't make you a bad person. Being anything, for the most part, doesn't even make you a bad person. It's your values, your relationship with the thing you're understanding. And so the dilemma with it, right, is like, At the end of the day, the fact that he objectified her, the fact that he broke her consent multiple times, the fact that he didn't believe her when she said things, the fact that he pushed his luck, all of that just coincides with a very toxic and unhealthy person. And at the end of the day, the fact that he's writing this message on her video, even though we did not need to see it, means he didn't understand how he fucked up and he called it a mistake multiple times. This is toxicity. This is dysfunction. This isn't necessarily an evil person, but it is an evil person in the philosophy sense furthest from your joy. So in a philosophy sense, when we're in our joy, we're in symbiosis with our consciousness, our body, all of the things that are us. We are furthest from our joy, closest to our evil when we're out of sync. And Lachlan is very out of sync. See, Z was closer to her evil when she was out of sync and dealing with Lachlan. Now that she's moving away from Lachlan, she's closer and moving towards her joy, right? But like Lachlan, super in his disjointed, dysfunctional evil, not because he's evil, but I mean in a philosophy sense, to be furthest from joy, furthest from symbiosis. He has no symbiosis with self. That's it. He's working with a specific framework that's leading him to conclusions. And look, that's everybody. Guys, I hate to tell you this, but Hitler isn't evil as a maniacal, like, meh, meh, meh. He's a guy with a belief system that led him to a conclusion. That's what humans are. Humans aren't magical, mythical creatures who are evil with magic. They're people who make decisions because of frameworks. And they're people who make very bad decisions and very evil decisions because it's reasonable within their framework. Lachlan's framework is bad and it's closest to his evil and it hurt other people in the process. He didn't just hurt himself, he hurt other people. He is not obligated, in my opinion, because we're evolved animals on a planet, to be a better person. He is not obligated to reach symbiosis with himself. Oh, and for the record, if this motherfucker ends up in my comment section, I'm screenshotting it and then deleting it. And also, if you end up in my DMs, I am screenshotting it and deleting it. But you are, do not contact me. I don't want to hear from you. I don't want to hear you talk. I don't want to hear your voice. I've already dealt with enough Lachlan's in my life. Go to therapy and go meditate in the mountains for six years. I don't want to hear you. I don't want to see you. I don't want to smell you. I know you smell. I don't want anything to do with you because I know I'm going to post this video and his little narc brain is going to hear a narcissist brain, not NPD brain, but high on the ego brain. His high ego is going to be like, oh, this other YouTuber is talking about me. And then he's going to be like, oh, I should explain myself to her. No, don't explain yourself to me. I don't want to hear it. Explain yourself to your God and your trees in the mountains. Okay. So mm -mm, girl, Absolutely not. Don't want to hear from you. Don't want to hear from your mother. Don't want to hear from anybody. Okay. Shout out to the moms who reach out to me sometimes. I appreciate you. Appreciate moms in my DMs, you know. Something about it makes me going, you know. Discord said left for a bit and watching on 2X really did not expect this man to be in the comments. Wow, like Jesus, let it go. Learn from it and move on. While he claims it's bad for for uh, bad people from his real life saw the video, but doesn't find it troubling that they, uh, to think they would read these uh, essay comments. I, girl, girl. Yes, Mimi said <laughs> he's obligated to mind his own business. You're obligated to mind your own business. Mind your own business. Ain't got no time for a girl. Hey, my router is about to reset in three minutes. So honestly, this is a great time to end stream, bros. Thank you for being here. I do appreciate it. I'm already an hour past my bedtime because the Lachlan kept me up at night. Look, I'm breaking out, bros. I should go. Shout out to Z for making a great video. And honestly, I don't give a fuck who this Lachlan guy is. It doesn't matter. I don't know anything about you. I already learned everything I need to know about you. You need to mind your fucking business, okay? All right, shout out to my audience for being amazing today. It was a great stream. I really do appreciate it. Please have a great weekend. I'll see you tomorrow, Saturday, in the Discord for events. Thank you for supporting the content. Appreciate that. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for
for the truth and living life as a fool. Da, 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 da.